All right, everybody, come one, come all. This is CS50 on Twitch. Uh, my name is Colton Ogden, and I'm today joined by CS50's Dan Coffey. Hello. Uh, Dan, why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourself? Uh, sure. History with CS50. Hello. So I have a long history with CS50. Um, as you may or may not know, I took to CS50 back in 2010, um, which is eight years ago, unbelievably at this point. Um, I took it, it was a much different course at the time. Um, there's a lot more resources now and some really exciting things going on. Um, and it's really just been a pleasure to be a part of it and watch it grow. And Colton, you were actually uh, hired around the same time I was hired. Um, yeah. So I joined in 2012 and I think you joined the same year? Yeah, I joined 2012 remotely um, and then came here in 2013. And uh, for the last eight years you've been, or not last full eight years, but for the most of the time you've actually been on the production team. I have, yep. Yeah, so I'm wearing my... <laughs> CS50 production sweatshirt <laughs> and uh, yeah. So my primary role in CS50 is not as a developer. So uh, I hope you'll forgive any stumbling or extra documentation reading today. Um, I as I took the course, um, you know, coding is a, a hobby and passion of mine. But uh, I would say my skill set is more aligned with the video production of the course. So if you enjoy how CS50 looks, um, you know, I have a hand in that. And uh, you know, we built the studio together here. Um, so it's kind of fun to be on the other side instead of being the guy who sits off on the side and turns your mic on and you know <laughs> fixes problems to actually be in the spotlight. Yeah, special thanks and shout out to Dan for, for building the streaming setup and also for being, uh, if you've been paying attention, he's <laughs> typically this character off stream as well. Um, a little Easter egg, CS50 has a, a long history with this Muppet too. Yeah, and, and I see we've got people joining in the chat. So hello Bavik Knight, hello Nuwanda, and uh, Galiash, Galiash. Yeah, Galiash seventy four, Bavik Knight. I missed yesterday's. Started early. Oh yeah, yesterday's did start early. We we normally uh, we've been doing four, p three four p.m. streams, but we're trying to go a little bit more towards one p.m. just to hit people abroad. Uh, Bella Kears is in. Hello, Bella. Good to see you. And Nuanda three 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 three, which is Astley is in here. Colton, Dan, and everybody. Um, and Galiash says hello. So awesome. We have a full crowd of people in here already. Um, so yeah, so you're you're on the production team, but you have a, a, a sort of a, a passion, and, um, a hobby, the, you know, dealing with programming and CS. Yep. Um, so what uh, is the project that we're going to be taking a look at today? Yeah. So today, if you want to switch to our uh, our laptop view here, I've got queued up. I'm just going to hit play on our video player. Um, the drawing app that David is using on screen here, it's called draw.cs50.io. If you want to play along at home. Um, and so the idea was we had this problem where we wanted no kind of chrome on the screen. We wanted everything to be hidden um, and so nice and clean and easy to use. And uh, the way that David wanted to like be able to draw in a race was to put one finger on the screen and move to draw two fingers to a race. There's some additional functionality which we're not going to implement today, um, which is three fingers is for larger race and then five fingers pans the image around. Um, and there's some interesting uh, features. Let's actually jump over to the app itself. So it is live at a uh, at draw.cs50.io. So you anybody, to, can, can, anybody can, can try this out, right? I'm just going to click and draw, and uh, it's that easy. There's a secret menu. If you click and swipe up from the bottom, there's a uh, hidden menu here. We can change our color. We can increase our stroke size. So if I were to go to draw.cs50.io on my computer, which I have here, which isn't yep. on, the, on the screen, yep. but and if I try to draw something, will you see it there on your, on your end as well? No, so that's one of the cool features, though. If we go to slash Twitch, and anybody in Twitch land that wants to join us, if you just go to slash Twitch. OK, go to mod right. slash Twitch And now, now if I click and draw. OK, I'm going to draw a three on the right. Oh, no, and, and it, it showed I see it showed up. The chat yeah. is kind of blocking it, but you can see behind there, the three is there. Okay. Yeah, and we've got the same functionality. If anybody uh, watching the stream wants to click and draw two, we'll see if this breaks itself. So this is very much a work in progress. Um, I'll say that because there is still a race condition I haven't quite figured out yet. Sure. Um, and so. Also, there's there's no delete feature yet, so uh, <laughs> always, not, always always more features yeah, to be implemented. Yeah, we can clear the screen, but this is a work in progress. So cool. uh, it's been a really fun project to work on, and the way that the version that you're seeing on screen right now works is uh, by using a technology called WebSockets. So it's like a real time connection between our our browsers and anybody else who connects to it um, can also draw. So uh, oh, we got to oh, take our some people. Who's who's drawing? It's uh, Bavik Knight. I'm guessing he's gonna be Bavik Knight. There it is. That's awesome. It's so cool so, to see people uh, interacting with it in real time. Yeah. Oh, we oh, got, we got a couple people. Oh, we got a <laughs> So like I'm a really heart. hoping that this doesn't break because it's quite possible that it will. Yeah. Um, or, or hopefully not yeah. devolve into a... Uh, and if we cheat and just look at the, uh, the uh, inspector here, the developer tools, you can see all of the debug information that's still here, even though this code's in production. Shh. 
Um, <laughs> it's really just because it's a work in progress. So, um, and it is a public repository, um, but you're welcome to take a peek at it. Um, it's Can not we, the cleanest code. Again, my. What, what's the uh, the URL? And I'll plug it in the Twitch chat. Uh, sure, it's uh, GitHub.com. CC50. Draw50. Draw50. And this, the version that's here is currently the master branch, if you're looking for it. That's so, so cool. We got, so we'll see some comments. I was wondering where I heard that name. Then I recall I watched this Turkish series, Ask Laftan Anlamaz in there and Asli. Oh, he's talking about Asli's name. OK, got it. OK. Um, cool. Bella is cool. Awesome. Yeah, and then we have uh, just another silly bot says hi. Hello. Hello. Good to have you with us today. So awesome. So how is, uh, like, what's the, I guess, the couple sentences that describe how or what Draw50 is implemented sure. in your using. I'm going to go back to this version just so we don't get any distracting drawing on the screen. Sure. If you just go to draw.cs50.io, it's simply uh, there's no WebSockets happening, so you're having your own drawing board. And this is analogous to what David uses on the screen if we look at the lecture here. Um, so um, the other th so we can draw by clicking, right? And this is actually built for using a touch screen. I don't have one in front of me. I just have a Mac in front of me. But if you use one finger, it'll draw. If you use two fingers, it'll erase. And you can simulate this by pressing Shift, right? So now we can erase. Um, if you hold Shift and Command, uh, let me draw a little bit more on the screen first. You can do large erase. Or that's sorry, that's pan. Uh, so you can move things around. And then if you hold just Command, you can do large erase for clearing big portions of the screen. Command is probably a Control on Windows. Do we know? Uh, Some folks or alt. Using one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Alt or uh, control probably on Windows. Yeah. Goal one says that's really nice. Yeah. I mean, it's it's kind of cool because you know, as you know, computer scientists or coders ourselves, it's really fun. Like this is why I love it, right? Being able to solve your own problems. Because we were using this. Uh, we had a student, former student um, Bjorn, who developed the first version of this app for us, and it ran on Windows directly um, on a Microsoft Surface, the original. And it just like it's really hard to add new features. You know, we had to work with Bjorn to get him to make tweaks for us, and that was wonderful. But it's so nice just using JavaScript to be able to very quickly implement something new and try something new. And I really that's one of my favorite parts about you know playing with code is that. Uh, Literally, David, was, this was, uh, I think, a week before lecture. And I got to give credit to uh, Rangjin Liu, who uh, co-developed this with me. Um, he actually made the first version of it. And so um, you know, it's just really fun to open it up and, and a week before lecture say, hey, how do we build an app that gets rid of all the stuff on the screen um, and has these features where I can just use my fingers and get the distraction away of all the stuff that sits on the screen. And, and here we are. So And it's networked too, which is nice, right? As we've just seen. Yeah, you know, so that's, that's the current thinking. So I teach uh, an intro to digital media class here at Harvard. And so uh, I plan to use this in the spring in my course, which is called Exploring Digital Media. Um, and it will be online if you care to join us this, this coming spring. Um, and that's exploring digital.media as a domain. Does it have a website at the moment? It does. Don't don't plug it yet because it's last year's okay. last year's syllabus sure. still. Sure. Uh, okay. But we'll definitely put out some uh, you know the the URL once it's ready to go. I'm hoping to actually update the syllabus this week. I have it updated. It's not updated in the markdown, so um, I haven't committed it yet. Awesome. So I thought today what we would do is kind of implement a simple version of draw.cs50.io, um, where we basically have a, a canvas element that we're going to draw on. Um, we'll break down like getting mouse input and coordinates, um, and go through the process of drawing, erasing, maybe changing colors. Uh, if there's any feature requests out there that we want to implement together, certainly put it in the chat. Um, but and questions, as always. And questions, yeah. And we're, uh, you know, I'm the kind of coder who I, I don't do this full time, so I'm going to be reading lots of documentation. I'll take you down that journey with me. Um, it's an important part of being a programmer. Yeah. So uh, I, should we just get started? Mm -hmm. All right. Let's go ahead and close this. So I'm going to simply start by opening my code editor. I'm going to use Sublime Text and make a new file. Um, let's go ahead and get ourselves organized here. From, from the very beginning, too, which yeah. is the, how we do. So on my desktop, let's just make a new folder and call this uh, draw50live. <laughs> Put all our files in there. I like to use this view. Um, and let's save this file as index.html. Put it into my draw50live folder. And here we go. We've got the startings of our web page. Beautiful. All right. I think it's doc type <laughs> HTML. Or is it all caps? Uh, I think you can do either one. OK. We'll leave it like that. Uh, we open our HTML element. We'll go ahead and preemptively close it. Do the same thing with our head. Close our head. Uh, whoops. We'll put our body element in here too. Everyone's getting a day one HTML tutorial. Yeah, welcome, as well. welcome to HTML uh, 
okay, it's technically HTML5, right? Yeah. But HTML 1.0 for those of us uh, starting from scratch here. Body element, uh, body element, great. Um, so here is our rough HTML page. It's got nothing in it at the moment. Um, and let's go ahead and look at our, our first. So there's, there's two technologies which we're going to use on this. Um, and so paper.js, let's go ahead and Google that together. Paper.js.org is the URL. And if we go to this, uh, it does a lot of really cool things with uh, Canvas elements and um, different things. And we can just look through a couple of these maybe because they're really fun. Uh, let's see, tutorial examples. Just sort of like vector-based. Yeah, like ways to visualize things. You can it takes images. You can like oh that's cool. This detects like edge detection, like oh, collisions. Nice. That like is it really does cool. a really it's, and it's really well documented. So if you're looking for like a drawing library, um, it is a really great place to start because um, the documentation is really good. And there's wow. a lot of good examples that you can just click on. Neon rainbow, right? Is, uh, you want to see neon rainbow right there? Yeah. No, yeah, rainbow. Yeah. There we go. So right, like this is pretty cool. Wow. Yeah, and that is all, pretty cool. All JavaScript, all Canvas. Um, and it follows the mouse. So, and like it says here, if you click on source, you can even see the source code for this, and you can modify it and run it. So it's a really easy way to kind of get up and running. Um, so, Mavic Knights has started 650W the web course just yesterday. Oh, week. nice! So he's uh, yeah. he's from very familiar he's with uh, getting, what we've talked about so far. Brian is probably keeping him pretty busy. Yeah, probably. All right, so this is uh, what we're going to use to actually create our, our Canvas element for drawing. Um, but we need a way to kind of track the mouse and keep track of where the coordinates on the screen are that we're going to actually draw with. Um, and so for that, we're going to use a library called Hammer.js, which is just a popular touch library. Um, again, really well supported. If we go here, this is where you can download the code. Um, but so the so the other library does let you do it does do like single mouse detection because I noticed that the the Nyan cat thing would follow your mouse. Probably. You know? So and this one's for like multi touch. Yeah. Like multiple multiple fingers. Let, let's actually look because that's a really good question. Um, oh, it looks like view dot center view dot bounds. Yeah. So we could probably implement implement this entirely with just paper JS. Um, I was using. Uh, Hammer.js because Hammer.js is really for touch interaction. And when I developed this with Rongjun for draw.cs50, we were planning on using a touch screen. We were planning on using you know five to ten fingers, um, and you can't do that with just Paper.js alone. Sure. But I'm sure we could probably do it with probably Paper like JS. a simple version. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can well, we can you know, we'll, Hammer.js. Yeah, we'll the... use Hammer.js just to you know mingle two libraries together because it's always can be fun to figure out. And I'm also just more familiar with the elements in uh, sure, yeah. Hammer.js a little bit more. So as you can see, if I click back here to the the Hammer.js GitHub page, you can, it's for you know, click and drag stuff. Um, but the docs is really where we want to look at, because this is going to get us started. Good library has good docs. Oh. Yes, yes. Um, all right, so we'll go to Paper.js as well. And we'll go to their um, tutorials if you want to like, just get started with a, a simple example. But we're going to look at the reference page as well. Um, all right, so I guess the first thing we should do is set up our Canvas and our HTML page. OK. Um, so let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to make a, a div with an ID of touch. Or maybe we should call it draw. Sure, yeah. Since we'll be drawing. And then we'll go ahead and close that div. And so now, since we have a unique ID for this div, um, we can set up our libraries to interact with it. Um, and we'll, let's also go ahead and make our own CSS file now. So we'll just call this uh, style. Whoops. Save this as style. CSS. Sorry, this is going to be a painful tutorial and bad typing as well. So get excited. Now you're doing great. All right, so HTML and body. I want to modify both at the same time, so I can do that with just the comma. Um, and I'm just going to cheat and look at what I did before, because CSS is also not my strong suit. But uh, CSS isn't my strong. I end up always needing to look at to yeah. Google if I need to figure something out with CSS. Uh, so I'm just going to make the height and width 100% so that it fills the web page completely. Um, I'm going to make sure that there's no margin attached. Cheyenne12 um, says, do you plan on doing a live session on some data structures anytime soon? Um, nothing concrete, but I'll definitely take a look at um, you know, what we could do in that regard, or maybe ask some people that are super intimate with um, data structures or have some ideas in mind for what they want to do. Um, and I'll consider maybe doing some myself. Good question. Thank you for the suggestion. All right. And so we're going to make our, uh, our ID of touch. We're going to give that a few parameters. Just fill that to the, so it fills the entire height and width of the screen. We're going to make the height 100%. So 
So we want to we want to make that draw though, right? Because I think you're touch right. was it you're right. previously. Yep. If we look back here, I did make the ID draw. And so the pound sign is like an ID, like looking yeah, for so an, access ID. an ID. If this was a class, we would use a period instead, right? But since we're using an ID, we're going to use the pound. Uh, we'll make the width 100. percent All right, looking good. So if we just now open this web page, so we can start to look at what we're doing. Uh, Simply double click on that, and here it is. Beautiful. We'll open our, our developer tools, which is view developer, uh, developer tools, or command, option command I if you're using a keyboard shortcut. And Bavik, yes, you're right. Hash is for IDs and dot is for classes. And M. Kloppenberg, uh, we just started, so we, we haven't dived too deep into anything yet, but um, basically, paper, paper JS and Hammer JS are a couple libraries you're going to be using, and we're making the digital Blackboard app that David uses in lecture. Yeah, simple version. Draw 50. And the, the link is in the, for the source code, I can pass it to you here. All right, and so we can see here, we've got our web page being started up here. And so let's go ahead and bring in our library. So we need paper.js. I'm also going to use jQuery just to, to wrap my, all of my JavaScript. Sure, so, another, another JavaScript library that gives us yeah. a lot of useful features. And I'm just going to Google jQuery CDN. Because um, I like to, instead of having to download the code and install it, I'm just going to go ahead and um, get the CDN link for it. And we want, I want just like a URL that I can copy paste. Oh, the, the CDN URL? Yeah. This will probably do it. Yeah, they usually have it. There uh, it is. This is what I want. Yeah. So we're just going to get the core jQuery. So I copy that. Um, go ahead and put this into my my head here, right? That's where all the JavaScript goes. Okay, so we got to make a script type equals JavaScript and it's source, right? Um, yeah. Go ahead and close that tag. So that should get us our uh, CDN link to the jQuery core. We're going to do the same thing. Let me verify that it's source. You can keep going. Okay. Actually, 100, I don't do I'm a lot pretty of I'm pretty sure it's source. I'm pretty sure it is, but. All right, we also, let's get a paper.js CDN. Right, same thing. There's paper.js core. Let's take the latest. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in here. All right, looking good. And then hammer.js. All right, I forgot to copy this element, so let's go ahead and do that. Come back here, grab the link, and paste this in. And so, bam. Now, we should, if we reload, we'll just make sure that uh, they're all loading as expected. If we look at our network tab, you can, um, there's core.js, did I not nice. save? Save. I don't think you refreshed the page, did you? Oh, did you refresh oh, the page? Maybe I didn't. All right. Uh, hey, Colin, please prepare a session on Java parallel programming, thread semaphores, and monitors. Thank you. Yeah, d definitely take a look at that. All right, we're going to keep going for a moment. I don't do a lot of it myself, so I, I wouldn't be able to probably do it on my own. I'd probably have to find somebody. But if I know anybody that programs in Java, I'll definitely ask them. Um, are they basically libraries, paper, and hammers? Is that yes, it? they are, exactly. Right. So code you don't have to write that takes care of a lot of the low-level details that you don't have to know about, and it just makes it easy to use. And again, we chose these two libraries because they're very great, very well documented, and easy to use. Uh, let's make sure I have jQuery in here. There it is. All right. And so. Um, we'll just kind of build a big monolithic application for now. Um, is the, the functionality to uh, do onload with jQuery. I think it's a um, document.onload, something like that. Let's just do a quick search for it. Document oh, document.ready. Document ready. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, then it takes an anonymous function, I believe. Great. And I got to actually put this into a script tag yeah, too. Correct. So script type equals text. JavaScript, no, just JavaScript, right? Yeah, I think so. I don't even think you need the type equals JavaScript, actually. I'm old school, Colton. <laughs> like I said, I took CS15 in 2010. We were using uh, local servers at the time, there was no IDE. All right, so uh, let's just ha do a little console.log to make sure this is working. Hi there. Uh, okay, it, it, I think it's text JavaScript. That'll just give me the 
the highlighting in my, in my syntax highlighting so that it's easier to kind of read the code. All right, so we'll do a quick reload on our, our HTML page. Reload. All right. So what I think what I think you have to do too, I think this has to be an anonymous function inside the inside of the parentheses there. So you would have something like um, let's see, uh, it could be like uh, document dot ready, and then it'd be like function. Ah, uh, okay. So I can take out this extra curly brace. This should get us where we want to be. Thank you, Colton. Mm -hmm. Struggles. <laughs> All right, we reload that. It's still not working. So, so close, so close, but so far. Um, I feel like this is a really amateur move, so I'm going to just <laughs> go to my sort of my cheat sheet for a second, That's right. figure this out real quick, and uh, stop wasting everybody's time. Uh, it's always the silly things that trip you up, right? Yeah. Uh, you entered it correctly. So, so what am I doing wrong? Let's debug this together. Is it because it's in the head? Does it have to go in the body? I don't think so because we have document ready, right? Yeah, you would think so, right? Um, let's just take a look at the documentation for document ready. Uh, jQuery document ready. Now it definitely says that you did it correctly. All right, we got our phone. Oh, console.log ready. So that is all looking good. We can just move this to the body and see. Do a little, little check here. I don't think this is it, though. I don't think this is the problem. Yeah, I'm not sure. Um, yeah. Not. Did you sh did you maybe shift reload your index? I mean, it's a silly thing. I did. I did. I did. Um, all right. Stand by, everybody. Let's fix this. Part too. of the fun of, of live coding. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm not preparing a real example at the time. <laughs> Uh, Gaza says, please take a look at the rest of the unique way to communicate with you is Facebook or CFL session. Sorry for that. Yeah, no problem. Again, Gaza, I uh, don't have a ton of time, but when I do find time, I'll definitely take a look at it. For Sunlight says, no problem. Uh, for Sunlight, check elements, bad ignite. Oh, so this is how you debug JS in the console. I kind of had a very hard time with jQuery in the mashup piece set. Yeah, no, console's a fantastic way to, to debug like variables and stuff like that. Um, we'll do a bunch of that today, too. Yeah, debugging is a part of the fun, you know? Just another silly bot says, yeah, don't worry, we're here, not for a speed run, yeah. Excellent. Well, well next time, we can maybe do a speed run next time. Uh, I says, it's OK. Maybe. Just watch the playback at 2x when you watch this after <laughs> yeah. the fact. Um, Babic Knight says, glad that I'm not the only one. Yeah, no, it's. No, welcome to the club, guys. Little things happen, you know? It's, it's uh, all too common. All right, I did this before. Yeah, that's like the shorthand version of it, the dollar sign. When jo in jQuery, jQuery, this is the dollar sign, and then um, the, they allow you as a shorthand to say dollar sign, and then I think just empty one or whatever. Oh, I uh, think it's because I didn't, I didn't, oh, these are self-closing. Can you, are script tags not self-closing? Oh, yeah, because is. they do have the, uh, yeah, they do have the, but didn't you, I thought you said you, you saw jQuery in the uh, um, console. Oh, you I saw, did. The, you I saw, saw the, the first one. You saw the library load, right? Dollar, dollar sign, sign is not, not defined. defined. Network. OK, so it was that these weren't closed. That was part is of it, it. Is it core? Um, is core different from jQuery.min.js? Yeah, so min is minified version, so it's just a lighter weight version of the code. But core is still has all the core stuff. Core is all the basic functionality okay. of, of, of it. So now we're seeing all of our libraries come in, which is good. And so the issue was that I didn't have these closing script tags. Uh, after everything, it's one of those silly things. Like I thought, just like an image, you can put a, a trailing slash like that to close the, the element. You can't, so you have to have an actual closing script tag, um, even though there's nothing in the middle. Kind of silly, but uh, definitely tripped me up. And so, so now, now it's saying that in the console, it says that dollar sign is not defined. Yeah. So weird. for some reason, we're not getting jQuery. Let's see. If we do this, so we are getting it right. So here's the the function. If I do the dollar sign, that's the shorthand for jQuery. Yeah. So we should be able to. Uh, it must be because. Oh, you're not jQuery doing. You're not doing document dot ready anymore. I don't think. I shortened it to what I did, in production, which is this, um, but we can go back to see if that's it. Document. Uh, dot ready. Function. Open brace. So this is back to where we were. Let's see if this fixes it. 
Oh, it still doesn't fix it. Oh, boy. <laughs> it's going to be quite a stream here. Yeah, okay. it's a, a fun stuff, you know. It's all right. I had a, I had a couple streams where I tripped up on like a, uh, I was missing, a, I had two variables that were similarly named and I spent like 10 minutes trying to figure out why uh, my code wasn't working. It was, uh, it was a fun, fun stuff. Zodiac, hello, thanks for joining us today. Um, guys, I hope you make an open street map demo of an app that anchors a route into a map and identify all the city points between the two cities as a little carpooling car. Oh, like an Uber type thing? Yeah, that would be a bit of a, that, that'd be a bit of a somewhat complicated stream, but we could definitely maybe mock up an Uber type, uh, an Uber type demo one of these days. For somebody says, use Firefox. All right, I'm gonna um, go to jQuery's website directly to get the actual link. So let's see. Um, I had never seen Core before. I, I thought you needed the jQuery min, but I might be wrong. I don't think so. jQuery Core. Does this actually download it, or can I get the? Uh... I don't know what jQuery Core is. I've never. Seen, I, it's been a while since I've used jQuery. I know about jQuery, like jQuery two, jQuery one. You usually get the min build. Um, I'm not, I'm not familiar with Core. All right, we'll go to W3Schools is a great resource as like an example for getting started, right? So we can, let's try just taking this version of jQuery 3.3.1 and see if this will fix it, right? So now, whoops. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's not a CDN link. All right, here's, a, here's a link from Google, right? So you can see the example of using it in the head tag. It's got a closing script tag. So we'll go ahead and just replace this line. Cool. And see if this helps us out. Cross our fingers. Oh, okay. Hey there. So, so it was the, that core version was with the core. Yeah, that's weird. I'm not sure I what that is. I, that was the first time I'd seen core. First time, I don't Woo! know, but this, this this Saturday Chrome gave so much trouble. Firefox worked fine. Oh yeah, I mean browsers definitely do have inner like interoperability issues. Uh, Chrome tends to be the most stable, and Firefox is also really stable. I'm not sure. I think it depends on what you're trying to do. Yeah, and I think it's also your preference, right? Like I've used. Chrome for developing pretty much since it came out. And so I'm used to the keyboard shortcuts to open up the console. I know where everything is. So it's also just my preference to use it. Um, but I could, you know, I hear great things about Firefox. So yeah. I used Firefox it. before I even knew what Chrome was. I used to use Firefox all the time. For some right, we're getting some yays. Thank you guys for your <laughs> emotional support. We're going we're gonna to get there, I promise. Let me shrink this font just a little bit. OK. I guarantee, I guarantee you will never forget that core is not the way to go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> OK. So. Uh, all right, so let's review where we're at, right? We've got our basic web page up. We have, uh, if we look at the elements of our page, we have our draw div. Um, and the sizing on this, if we look over here, this is how you can see the, the current sizing applied. And so it's the size of our, um, our page. And let's go ahead and just take a look at the color of it. Um, so I like to kind of poke at things as I go to make sure I'm touching things the right way. So um, we could put a style tag in here, but since we have this, our style.css handy to go. Yeah, typically um, want to keep your CSS out of your yeah. HTML page. So we'll just do a little background uh, color. Um, and let's go ahead and just make it black, right? Because if we're going to do like a blackboard type thing, let's go ahead and make our background black if I refresh now. Uh, did you give it the style? Oh, wait, what, what was the, the, the selector I, that you did? Yep. The, oh, it's, oh, because it needs yeah. to be draw. Remember we talked about this and I never <laughs> changed it. <laughs> Silly me. Uh, do we need to uh, uh, hard refresh? Yeah. Shift refresh or whatever it is. Yep. Command Shift R. All right. Let's take a look. So. Oh, did you link your CSS in your HTML? No, no I did not. <laughs> so I have a nice style.css page, but there is no default that the browser looks for, right? So right. we need to link in our style sheet. So we'll go ahead and do that up top here. Um, is it style sheet? I think it's link. link. Uh, That's right. Rel equals style sheet and then source. Uh, and since it's in the same directory, I can simply just say uh, style.css with no path to it. Yeah, rel style sheet type equals text slash CSS, and then Oops, uh, yeah. href equals style.css. OK. All these, all these different attribute yeah, things you got to like memorize. Yeah, it's so silly, right? And I believe you can self-close the link tag. Uh, I didn't, you don't even, need, either, uh, you don't even don't. need the slash for okay, it. OK, great. It looks like. Reload the page. Bam. Boom. All right. And now you can see uh, over here in our, our uh, Style and if you're ever playing with CSS, like this tool is the greatest. So if you want to just change the uh, the width to 50%, you just change it. Whoops, 50%, and it happens immediately. And so like I am terrible at CSS, but this is the way that I stumble through it because I'll come in here, play with the parameters, and we'll do this as we build the menu. Um, 
and then you finally get it how you like it, and then you look at these uh, parameters, and you uh, actually, should we hide the chat maybe so that this isn't covered up? Oh, sure, yeah, let's take the chat off for just a second. Right, so uh, I changed this parameter here to 50%. And it immediately it reflects on the page. And I'm not actually editing my source code. So um, if I want to change that in reality, I need to go back to my text editor and change it there. Right. But really handy for debugging any CSS issues. Yeah, you don't want to have to keep editing your text and then refresh the page over and over again. Yeah, and Bavik asked us to move the chat box. So I think we, oh, we yeah. did that just in time. Here, I'll bring it back up, and then I'll go to the editor. I'll make it a little bit smaller, just so we can, um, can see just a little better. Let's make it a little bit smaller. Hopefully it won't be too um, won't be too small on stream when it starts populating again. Okay. But definitely let us know. I can move the text around, the text editor around too. All right, um, great. Let's see what should we do next. I did make a a little order of operations here so that we didn't <laughs> get too far off the rails. Sort of like a, All right, a so we covered Paper.js. We looked at Hammer.js. We got jQuery set up. Our Canvas is set up. We did our our background is now colored. So. Um, let's go ahead and take a look at, at Hammer.js. And so I think what we'd like to do, maybe we could start by just seeing the coordinates of the mouse in the console. When oh, we sure, click, yeah. Right? Maybe yeah, that's yeah. a good that kind work. of way to get started. Gaston says, hey, Colton, you look like those VIP raving in Dubai. What did he call Face Mash or Facebook? Let's have a beer. I have all the code needed. The Winklevoss brothers are proud of you. Eduardo Saverin. Have you seen the movie The Social Network? I haven't seen The Social Network, so I'm not sure if you you're... You haven't seen The Social Network? I haven't. Is it oh, quoting man. from The Social Network? It's a great movie. Um, I've heard it's good. I'm not sure if, the, if what he said in the message there is a quote from it or not. Um, I hope it's a compliment, so thank you if it is. Uh, I haven't seen The Social Network, though, so I'm not, I don't, I'm not entirely sure I understand the, uh, the message. Um, and then Bavik said, can you move the chat box, which we did. Okay. All right, so uh, here we are at the Hammer.js documentation. I'm just going to click on Getting Started. Um, and so you know, usually when you come to an, a library like this, um, there's simple documentation for how to get started. Um, so. Let's go ahead and just get the uh, the hammer time, the hammer <laughs> element set up. I love how it's hammer time, hammer yeah. time that get. Um, and they give you this uh, line of code, which is helpful, especially with touch interaction, um, that I'm just going to copy paste into my page, um, just in the head, so that um, the the screen oh, sizes appropriately as expected. Okay, nice. Um, all right, so we have a bunch of examples here. And the, the thing I really like about Hammer.js is that there's a couple ways to use it. You can use it um, by setting up different actions, right? So a pan is like a click and a drag. A swipe is like a, a bit more quick of a flick. And like it, you can set the parameters for how quick you want things to happen. Uh, you can set up something like a quadruple tap, which means that somebody has to tap four times to trigger that the action. So um, you're naming it yourself. You're basically saying, I want something called a quadruple tap to fire off if someone taps four times in a row. Yeah, and they've got some some basic ones too, right? You can just have something called pan. Pan is something that is just like a click and a drag kind of thing, or a tap and a drag. Because again, Hammer.js is made for like human interaction with fingers and digits, and and uh, it works with a mouse too. Um, it's like an event manager type library. Exactly. Mostly. And so when we built, um, you know, Draw Fifty. Uh, there's, a, there's another feature of Hammer.js that I like. Um, it just gives you more control. And I'm going to go to the actual API area for this. And it's hidden down here somewhere. I'm just going to scroll until I find it. Gossin says, yes, right the compliment. Here. I love you, CS50, especially you. Thanks, Gossin. Much <laughs> appreciated. Um, all right, so this, guys, can make you feel like a real uh, you know, hacker here. So. <laughs> A secret event is being triggered by Hammer every time that an event is emitted. And so this is the function that I use to actually create the actions with the draw 50. Um, we can go ahead and do that here, because it gives you a couple of things. Um, so I'm going to copy paste this in for now. And I'm getting ahead of myself. So we're going to uh, just put this here with a comment so that we uh, uh, handle touch input. We'll paste that in for the moment. Got to love the way that tabs are auto formatted on paste. Yeah. All right, and then uh, let's get our, our uh, Hammer Manager set up. That didn't jump for me. Hammer defaults. I think we can just do this. So our, our Hammer element is going to be this. And my element, we can just do. And that's going to be the, the, the draw div that we specified earlier, right? Yep. Um, and so we could even shorten this. And I have to remember, it was uh, 
the ID is draw, not touch, which is what the mistake we made earlier. So you're grabbing an element with document.get element by ID, mm -hmm. which grabs it from the from which, the web from their HTML page, right? Mm -hmm. And it stores it in this variable, but we can you know shortcut this even and just take this and paste it in here. Ah, oh, right, right, okay. And nice. so now that element is gonna turn it into a So fancy. Yeah. Okay, so then we got DJM in the in the stream, everybody. Thanks to Dan and Colton for today's stream. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Thanks yeah. for tuning in. All right, so uh, here we go. If everything that we've set up is correct so far, what's going to happen is when our page initializes, and once the page is loaded, it's going to inst initiate the uh, hammer uh, object element. Yeah, this would be an object. object. Um, and so then there's a listener, which is hammer time on, which will automatically fire. And what it's going to do, anytime that there's any input, it's going to console.log the pointers. Um, so let's go ahead and just see if this works. So nice. if we go back here, I'm going to reload the page. I'm going to give myself just a little bit more space here and shrink this. And so if we want to look at the output of the JavaScript console, we go here, oh, hammer is not defined. Hammer is not defined. So let's go, let's go debug. Um, new hammer we have the hammer library here and let's go back to the documentation I don't need jQuery anymore we don't need these CDN links up anymore hammer JS okay let's go back to the getting started always <laughs> a good place to start yep all right uh, so we have is new hammer is going to be what we're looking for there it is yeah what you are doing okay there's something else silly so it's not um it's not recognizing that you imported the hammer library for some reason. Yeah. Hammer is not defined. Hammer is not defined. Reference error. Hammer is not defined. jQuery's deferred exception. Okay. Hammer not defined. Let me help you try and debug that. Great. All those silly things. <laughs> a lot of people use it with node setup, but you don't have it. You don't have it set up. I don't. In, We're in just using setup, right? static. Like even for the even for the deployed app. Uh, we are using node for the deployed app, but that's just for the WebSocket portion, okay. and it uses a database as well. Okay, let's figure out what's going on here. So we have our closing. Oh, uh, yeah, a ton of people are. A ton of people use it in the, uh, the. So all their errors are saying because their gulp, what's called a gulp file, doesn't have the a reference to it. But that's in a node setup, so we're actually using it as a, as a script that we have like locally on our file system. So it's not quite the same. So it's trying to got to figure out why that is. Yeah, and we're getting two hundred. If we look at just like trying to debug, right? We get a two hundred from the uh, CDNJS at Cloudflare that we. So it is bringing it in. So we must be doing something wrong with the loading order. Um, so if you look at the, right, here's, here is hammer.js, right? So you can see that it's loading. So let's now, you would think that with document.ready, right? It would yeah. wait for the page to be ready, but I wonder if uh, we're just doing this in the wrong order. No, um, the, yeah, because you're loading jQuery first, and it, I mean it should load all the scripts and have mm -hmm. all d done all that yeah, by, by the, the time, time it, it actually yeah. executes your document already. So that's why I'm confusing. Oh, is it? It's because I'm calling hammer time, and our variable is MC. Oh, because I'm copying from two different places right. in the documentation. That'll do it. So that is probably our problem. Let's reload here. Uh, oh, it still says hammer's not defined. Index at line 15. Oh, okay. it's where, where you are instantiating it. It's on your instant. I mean, so that's another bug that you caught yeah. by looking through we your source code. We got ahead of ourselves by so one. So we did, we did, we did, <laughs> we, yeah, we jumped that. But we still have to figure out the, the new hammer, uh, the instantiation of that. Yeah. So hammer, not defined, JavaScript. Um, for the moment, I'm going to cheat and just move this in to right above and see if this will. Oh, uh, I don't think you can, oh, yeah, you can't include can a script in, nope, in a right. block of code. This is definitely an amateur error. I know that. So just a matter of figuring out uh, how to get around so it. So many, everybody uses Hammer.js in a node setup, which is uh, hilarious. New Hammer. And we're definitely using like the most recent version of it and like a version yeah. that supports the Hammer. Yeah, let me just try. Um, 
Google Hammer.js. A lot of people are reporting issues with jQuery and Hammer. Hmm. Well, we do use it in the production version of Draw50, so. This is definitions after your app. Hammer.js. So we're going to try getting it from Google because they use it with the Ajax. For some, it says it takes two parameters. Is that the case? Is that true? Does it take two parameters? Uh, there's an options parameter which you can pass in second, but the, I think the issue is that it's not even uh, recognizing yeah. hammer, right? Yeah, the, hammer hammer symbol, the hammer symbol is not being defined, yeah. Um, la <laughs> it's funny, usage. It's easy to use. Just include the library and yeah. create a new instance. OK, so I think it's got something to do with how we're importing our libraries. Um, because the error is now gone, uh, I, all I simply did was switch to um, our, the Google APIs instead of CDNJS after Cloudflare. I'm almost positive this is a user error on my part, and debugging it live is stressful. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch to the thing that works for now. Um, but so, okay, so you basically did a C from CDNJS to, to the Google version, and that worked? Yeah, and I'm wondering if Paper.js is going to be the same thing. So I'm going to preemptively just <laughs> see if I can switch now to, I'm guessing the, that it loads it. Uh, Dynamically with Ajax from this link, um, or something with that. Let's see, is is PaperJS on here? Do you host it, Google? All right. Well, we'll cover that when we when we cross that bridge. For now, we're just working on getting our touch stuff. So, what we posited was that now that we have everything hooked up, if we click um, for Hammer input on this Canvas element. I'm hoping that in the console, we see the coordinates. And there oh, we, we go. So as we, yeah, yeah, we see pointer event. And so if we look, what we're actually seeing is uh, this thing here that we're logging called ev.pointers. And so if we just look at the Hammer.js documentation, um, this is what we're going to see. So once we expand this, um, we'll probably see all of this information that you get from every single event, right? And so that's firing like a, you know, thousands of times a second. Um, and so let's just go ahead and look at that in the console and see what we have in here. Uh, pointer event. Oh, boy. <laughs> Live coding. Um, let's look at EO. Oh, because you're, lo you're logging the actual pointers uh, yeah. event. Uh, let me reload this. Click and drag. There we go. This is what I was looking for, right? So now, if we just open up one of these, just like the documentation says, we have all of these parameters. And previously, you were just uh, doing the array of pointers. Yep. Like if there are multiple, is that multiple yep. fingers? Yep, exactly. It's how many fingers are touching the screen, right? right? And so this is oh, an array okay. of zero Got at it. the moment. Um, so handy if you're trying to do finger detection for how many pointers you're using. Um, all right, but what's going to be really helpful to us here is, I believe it's called center. There it is. And nice. so what we get on our screen is an x and y value. And I believe that the top left point is 0, 0, and the numbers grow as you come down across the screen. So this is going to be really handy when we want to tell Paper.js, like, hey, we want to draw at this point. Nice. All right? Is uh, for sunlight says, Dan, act like we're not here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's part of the fun, though. That, that, this uh, is what happens when you're not here. It's just probably a lot more cursing. <laughs> Bilateral interaction. Yeah. Kid-friendly version. Uh, Bavignite, it's the great debugging experience. Yes, yeah. debugging is uh, always fun. But I'm glad that we're getting back on track here, right? It's always getting yourself set up is the hardest part. And then the intellectually stimulating part of coding is actually doing the work once everything is working. So right. um, now we're getting to that part. So that's really exciting. Um, all right, so let's get uh, you know Paper.js set up now. Um, so we'll go over to Paper.js's documentation. We're going to click on there, getting started, or maybe tutorials working with Paper.js, because there's some instantiation that we have to do. Um, all right, so this is showing you how to kind of get started, import Paper.js. Um, all right, and so if I remember right, Paper.js has this thing that they use called PaperScript, and that takes away some of the overhead of actually like writing some JavaScript overhead. Um, I believe when I did this for production, I actually wrote it all in JavaScript, and it didn't use their PaperScript portion at all. Um, so let's go ahead and continue that way. Um, I'm going to cheat and look at my, my code for a second. It'll just be easier to get started. So I instantiate Paper.js with standby. 
the actual production code is also a monolithic app, so <laughs> we have a, just a lot of code yeah, to look Yeah, it's grown through. to be quite a large, too, you know, with the web Yeah, we started off as a stuff. really basic app, and uh, we just kept adding features, and I was like, oh, it'd be cool if you could draw with two people, and so you just keep building and building and building, and instead of stopping and refactoring the code, I just kept going, um, and that's where you end up. So this is a good lesson as do as I say, not as I do, um, and stop and take a break and refactor your code. All right. So let's go ahead and let's see what's easier. Examples. So the, um, this is all the paper script stuff, though, right? If we look at this, there's no importing or initializing paper.js. I know what we can do. Let's go to draw.sys50.io and look at the source code. <laughs> so we'll go to elements, and I believe I can search here. So in this, I noticed you used a, a canvas instead of a div. Is that. Uh, do we want to use a canvas in our demo today, or are we just going to use a div? Because oh, yeah. I think it works just fine either way. But I'm assuming, can, well, canvas I know for sure has yeah. more features than a div, but maybe it like injects a canvas into the div if it doesn't exist. Possibly, yeah. I'm actually not sure. We'd have to look up the documentation to be sure. We will make it a canvas element because paper is the thing that's going to care about that, right? Sure. Um, Hammer.js only cares that we have an element and right. that it can track on. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, all right, paper. I think I got all the, an emojis list there too. That's great. Yeah. And I like how Chrome actually renders them as emojis, too. Yeah. It knows how to parse it's the... A, uh, it's a fun hidden feature that's currently disabled, <laughs> where it makes the emojis kind of fly across the screen. Oh, that is I, I tried to get David to use it in a lecture, and uh, he shut me down right before <laughs> we got started, so I had to disable it. It feels apt, especially because we covered emojis in the first lecture this year. Yeah. All right. So I'm just looking for the, the piece of initializing Hammer.js as JavaScript, failing terribly. Um, it's all right. It's part of the... Uh, it's part of the, the experience. Yeah. Let's do work. Oh, using JavaScript directly. This seems like the place that we should actually start. <laughs> All right, so set up a scope, window on load. So window on this load is, would This is what I was load. looking for, paper yeah. setup. Um, and so we've got to get the actual canvas element. So you probably want to change, I'm guessing you want to change that div to be a canvas yep. instead. Let's go ahead and do that right now. So instead of div, we're going to make this canvas. Um, you want to change the closing tag as well. Thank you. Save me another headache. <laughs> Canvas. All right, so let's go ahead and do up in our initialization here, paper.setup. Um, and our Canvas is going to be the same element. I think that will work, because this is the same document.get element by right. ID. Yep. Um, all right, so let's Whoops. not save that. Save this version. Now go and reload this. Uh, paper is not defined. So we're having the same problem we had before. So it's definitely something with how we're loading the libraries in. Yeah, which um, is weird. I'm not sure why text, type, text JavaScript. Yeah, maybe what we could do, you know what, oh, you know what we're going to do, Colton? We're going to move this to the bottom of our body. Because uh -oh. remember, the page finishes loading, and then this is called. And for some reason, I'm, I'm not sure why, but it seems to not be loading this okay, let's in the try right it order. So let's do that. I'm going to move the script tag. How could I convince my employer in the US to hire me, whereas I'm in North Africa? Could trust be built online, says Gasson 119. Um, that's not something I have experience and expertise on, but I would imagine that, yes, that's probably um, your best bet would be to build a resume and reach out to companies, build a, a portfolio of projects, find an employer somewhere in the US um, in a tech-related field, and then, um, uh, yeah, to sort of establish that rapport um, but it's not an easy, you know, silver bullet question to answer. Um, so again, that's something that you'll have to undertake. Um, you know, just keep working hard at it. Uh, Bavik Knight, what's up with the this uh, var and let? I recall David using uh, let. Let is a um, a keyword introduced into JavaScript ES6, and it basically is kind of the same thing as var, but a little bit more. Um, it, by, it has different scoping rules, and I don't recall what they are offhand. Uh, let versus let var. Let keeps it within the parentheses, and var makes it accessible almost globally. Is that I how it is? It's, it's like Lua then? I believe so. OK. Um, in that case, then let is like a proper scope of uh, you know, like a variable, how it would, uh, would work in C, where your variable is um, sort of uh, delimited within wherever its parentheses, wherever its current scope is, it's only accessible there, whereas var is. Uh, global, more global variable. Um, I would have to do a little bit more research to, I think, elaborate on that because the semantics of that I'm not 100% sure about. Um, yeah, block scope for let 
and then var is um, var is the entire enclosing function. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. So if you were to declare a new variable within a like an if statement in a loop in a function, for example, and it had the same name as a function as a variable that you declared above that, like if you have a function that you declare x and then a, an if statement that declares its own x, those will be the same variable. But if you use let, then they'll both be different variables. Um, and you can get more sort of information on that if you look at the Mozilla documentation, developer.mozilla.org. They have a page on the semantics between let, the differences between let and var, and you can look at that a little bit. But they're, for our use case, unless we do some fairly complicated coding, they're more or less the same. Let is more, is, is more um, widely adopted now as part of ES6 and I think has less opportunity to uh, introduce subtle bugs. All right, here's what we're going to do, Colton. We're just going to download this ourselves. <laughs> we use the cert, yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not sure that this will actually fix it, but... Um, Papercore.min, probably, or paperfold.min. Yeah, so we're going to just move this into the JS folder, delete everything else, samples, and just copy this file name. Again, I'm sorry that we're having trouble debugging this, because this is really amateur hour happening here. Um, it's JS slash, right? Uh, yes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Reload console. OK. Well, you didn't that, get the error, so OK. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly not 100% sure what the error issue is with the loading it through script tags either. I have to look at that. Yeah. Um, all right, so now let's go ahead and just recap where we are. So we've got our hammer library installed, which will handle our touch events. And we've seen that we can get the coordinates from that. Um, we have our canvas set up. Um, and now Paper.js is initializing that. So the things that we're going to want to do next, let's just go ahead and put some pseudocode in for ourselves to figure out what we want to do. And so we want to uh, handle, there's, there's kind of three parts to drawing, right? And let's actually look at uh, the Draw50 app for this. Bavik, uh, let kind of seems fine. Global variables are generally not good practice. I think to elaborate on, I don't, I don't think, but based on the documentation I read, it's not that they become global. It's that they have different scoping rules such that yeah. you can easily overwrite the variable, depending on if you use it in a nested context. Um, but yeah, let just basically let avoids you overwriting variables sort of um, haphazardly. And then M. Kloppenberg put a yeah. Yeah, let var and then const being the other keyword, which is even more of a like a consideration for making sure your code is safer so that you don't you can't overwrite variables that should stay, you know, consistent throughout the entire application. Like const yeah. we cover consts in C or CS50 as well, I do believe, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right, so there's three parts to drawing, right? When you first click, so I just clicked my mouse and you can't see anything yet, but we've got an event that fired from Hammer that says, you know, event has started. Um, and then when I actually drag, right, it's firing a whole bunch of times every second, detecting as I move the mouse. And when I let go, another event is fired. That is the end. And what you might notice if, uh, if I kind of make some lines here, you can see how it's, it's kind of jagged in places. And when I let go, it actually smooths itself. Yeah. And this is the real reason that I chose Paper.js to actually implement this, is because we wanted to kind of clean up David's handwriting in lecture so that it, it automatically smooths. And uh, I was looking at all these algorithms that would do this for me. And then I found that Paper.js has this dot simplify uh, method. And I was like, problem solved. You know, some, so. things, some things aren't fixable, though. Yeah, like uh, importing JavaScript. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> OK, so uh, we want to handle start draw. Uh, we want to handle, we'll call it uh, middle draw, and handle uh, end draw. So when they first click down while they're drawing, and then when they let go, basically? Yeah, exactly. And so um, let's do this. We need to have uh, event handlers that, that are listening for when, or the listener for when uh, these, these events fire, right? And we can go ahead and use this hammer.event on, but we need to call functions that we'll define to handle, depending on if it's the first, middle, or last part of drawing, right. um, functions to handle this. Um, and so let's look at the structure of Paper.js for a second and how it works. So if we go back to the documentation and we go to their reference, so they're kind of, you know, global, you know, once you import paper, there's this global project that you're working on. Um, and each project has uh, layers on it. And so let's see, project, what I'm really looking for is, let's look over here on the right. So there's the, 
Um, there's layers to project. Projects have items, items have layers, layers have groups, shapes, rasters. Um, and so what we're going to be doing is all working in one layer. So you can have multiple layers if you want to do layering. And when I uh, built the emoji thing, so all the emojis move in the background, I put them on a separate layer so that as you drew, it didn't actually uh, mess with all the so emojis like a background, that were separate background yeah, layer. Yeah, exactly. If you think of it like Photoshop, if you've got uh, a layer on top of another layer, it kind of occludes what you're looking at. And that's kind of how it works. And so within our layer, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to add a bunch of these path items to it. Okay. And so a path will actually be the line. Um, and so for, for on each path, each, uh, each layer, if we look for children, so layers have children. Um, and children can be any shape uh, or object, but um, the, we're going to be adding paths to it. And so the way that we keep track of all the lines is by adding uh, you know these path items as children to the layer, and that's okay. going to kind of build our our actual drawing for us. Okay. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and make our function here, and so we'll just do uh, uh, const, um, and we'll call this function start draw. Okay. Um, and I believe if I get the syntax right. So I think it's equals first. Okay. I'm not used to using ES6. I decided I would step up and do it here, but uh, I, I don't have the page in front of me for the exact syntax. Um, I'm sorry, so it's equals, and then it's this, right? Yeah, then the and argument And then the annotation. Yeah, exactly. And then this, right? So there, nice, clean ES6. And so start draw is going to simply take an event um, for now. And so the event, if we look back, what is this event going to look like? And so for, for people who are unfamiliar, this is called arrow functions. It's basically the same thing that, you, that Dan did up on line 13 with function. And, but instead of needing the function keyword, you can just yeah. say equals and then the parentheses with the arguments and then an arrow and then the block of your function body. Yes. All right. So um, what we want to do is actually in this listener, we're going to decide which function to call. So let's go ahead and just copy paste for a second. Make middle draw. And then also end draw. And I can't remember. We might end up passing additional parameters, but we're just going to start with this. Okay. Um, and so um, now we need to call, depending on this event, the correct thing, if it's the start or end. So how do we know if it's the start or end? What, what is your guess, Colton? Um, I'm guessing like there's like a, probably a hammer.touch or on like start, yeah. touch start or something like that, some event. You got it. So if we look through here, right? And so uh, there's a parameter called, I think it's is first. Yeah. Oh, so nice. is okay. first will make it true. easy. Yeah. So it's like, again, I love this library for this reason. So every single event is going to have an is first. And literally, if it's the first time you t click the mouse, that's this parameter will be true. And if it's the last, is final will be true, nice. right? So uh, we can just have an if condition here. So if ev dot is first, um, then what we're going to do is call our start draw function and pass the ev. Nice. Right. So nice and simple. Havoc Knight says this is so much cleaner, referring to the equal the yeah yeah ES6. Arrow function. I know. I just you know as you're a dinosaur and you've <laughs> done it the old way for so long, it's hard to adapt sometimes, especially when you know you don't do it every day. Um, so else if um, ev dot is final. We'll go ahead and put that condition in now. Um, do that, and then the last case is going to be. Uh, I'm going to put just a note in here. Right? This is really for middle, because if it's not the first and it's not the last, it's going to be the middle. Right. Right. And so this is going to be uh, last, and we'll just keep. It's good, you know, good practice to keep comments in here. So this will be start, start last middle. Makes sense. All right. So if it's the final, we're going to call final. Draw, pass the event, and middle, same thing. Uh, middle, draw, pass the event. Nice. All right, making sense so far? Super clean. Great. So in start draw, let's go ahead and just, uh, I like to test as I go, right? Especially building such a long app. So we're going to do a console.log. Um, and we'll just say start draw. And let's go ahead and actually log a second thing at the same time. And we'll just, uh, if we look back at the documentation, and we look at, uh, we want the coordinates, right, to start drawing at. So right. if we look for, what was it called, center? Yeah. Every, center of the yeah. mouse click. Um, the center is has an x value and a y value. Um, so we'll go ahead and just log that. So this would be ev.center.x and ev.center.y. And so if that is 
this line works, we should see start draw and the start draw coordinates. Um, let's make sure that works before we copy paste. <laughs> Did you save it? Yes. Okay. All right, this is, uh, let's close the extra tabs we have open here. All right, to find. Why are we having this error again? Where did you reference it? I thought we solved this problem. Yeah, I thought we did too. Um, go back to your. Where? What line was it yeah. saying it was? So we're having an error on line 16. 16. Paper dot setup. Do you have to get a reference to paper first to say like var paper equals something? Uh, I don't think so. Let's see. Hold on, we'll go back to, uh, uh, what was it about? Remember the, the page we were looking at that was like, if you're using JavaScript? Yeah, using JavaScript directly. Uh, example, tutorials. Work on the job, whoops. Oh, I mean, you do, you do have the, um, you do have the text, the, the script at the bottom of your body, so I'm not sure if that's, if you wanna bring that back up to your script thing because you have the local source file, so if you go to the bottom, you put the you put it at the bottom of underneath. Oh, your you're canvas. saying put it at the top. Of yeah, it? since now you have it as a local file. Yeah. All right, we'll just put it in. Like right above, like right there. See if that works. Sure. And then shift, or like a command shift. Yeah, R, I'm hard reloading here, and that's not working. Um, let me put it at the top of the body so it loads first. Again, I know this is a dumb mistake. And I should easily be able to figure this out, um, but people are all the other people are having the issue. It looks like it's an issue on the actual. Uh, oh, because another That's NPM. A react, right? Yeah. Oh, I thought we were off. I thought we were past all this yeah, I trouble. Yeah, I thought we fixed that too. Yeah, it's really, really strange. Because if we look at our network, we're getting. Are we getting? Wait, we're not getting it. Uh, paper full. Oh yeah, there it is. So it is. It is loading. Most of these people, um, like the vast majority of people, seem to use it with a Node project. Yeah, yeah, it's really popular for that. Um, man, live debugging. This is fun. Yep. I'm so embarrassed because it's such a basic thing. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Like I said, I had I couldn't figure out that I was messing a variable up for like ten minutes. George seventeen eighty four says hello, hello George. Hello George. Thanks for joining us. We are currently debugging why uh, the paper JS is not importing yeah. into the project, but if you're unfamiliar with what we're doing, we're basically walking through a from scratch implementation of the drawing app that David uses in Sanders Theater. Oh, is it this? No. No, because it's loading. This shouldn't matter. No. Was that simply it? I didn't put the correct type in? I, I, I wouldn't think so, but try it. See what happens okay. if you click? Oh, really? So final draw is not OK. So, so a bunch of stuff happened here. The good thing is we see, uh, let's walk through the code and what happened. So that seemed to fix it. It was simply that I didn't have type, uh, the type correct for the JavaScript What file. was it before? It was just JavaScript. Oh. So it's text slash JavaScript. Causes some important. weird issue. Jeffrey Hughes says, hey, hey Jeffrey, thanks hey, for joining Jeffrey. us. Uh, Hezekiah, is that how you pronounce that? Let me let me read that in closer. Uh, Hezekiah Ma or Hezekiah says hello. Thank you for joining welcome, us. First, welcome, welcome. First time I've seen you in the chat. All right, so uh, great, Colton. We are, I think we are past the <laughs> painful installing process, and this is so. why people use like Gulp and other, uh, you know, I don't know, project managers is the right term, but uh, you know, ways to kind of install these things for you, so you simply work on the interesting part of the problem and don't have these kind of headaches that we're having now. I think going through it is a is a formative process, though. I it think, is. I think we are unlikely to make this mistake again, or at least we'll be conscious of it when it happens. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to fix the problem that we have here just by replacing oh, the final draw. Oh, because draw. Yeah, yeah, got it. Okay. So what's happening is, you know, as we fire the first input, right, the is first kind of parameter is true. So that calls start draw. So what we should see in the console is start draw, exclamation, exclamation, and then the x and y coordinates of the mouse, which is what we see here. I think you're still, you're still printing the um, pointers thing somewhere, too, which is yeah. kind of clogging up the... Yep. So yeah. we can go ahead and comment that out, right? Like so 20, it looks that's like. That's this right here. Let's comment that right out. Reload, reload this page, and now there we go. So start draw, even though I click and drag, right, so I can see the coordinates x and y, 
that uh, things are happening on screen. I'll make so we've clicked four times there just to, to show that. Yeah. And that's uh, giving you the x, y coordinate of where your mouse was in the canvas. Yeah. All right, so now let's move on to the uh, middle draw. All right, so if we do, we'll do the same thing just to give people a sense of like what's actually happening while we draw. Sure. This is middle, middle draw. And then we'll do end draw. Reload, and so we're going to get a lot more output here because yeah. the middle draw is going to Most of it's going to be middle right? draw. Yeah, tons of middle draw. See. And then when you finally let go, it does say end yeah. draw. So that's and really so, cool. Yeah, so we know that we're in the right order now. And so the next step is to kind of hook up Paper.js to actually draw our line. Finally, you know, we were talking about this drawing app. And, let's and I'm guessing actually, we'll feed those x, y values probably into the Paper.js. Yep. And let's go ahead and look at the documentation. We know we want to create a path. The path is a line. Um, so we'll just go to the reference. And let's look at uh, path. Bavik says, cool things happening. <laughs> I'm glad, Bavik. Yeah. Thanks for sticking with us. Um, all right, so um, if I recall correctly, it's pretty easy to create a path. Um, and so you can simply, uh, there's a bunch of parameters in a path as well. Um, and so you can see all kinds of different shapes that you can make. We're gonna, we're gonna create a line. And so paths have segments, uh, you know, there's a bunch of easily accessible properties here that you can quickly grab and use. Um, there's a bunch of methods attached to it as well. So if you wanna add a segment, right, which is what we're gonna end up doing in middle draw, right? So first we're gonna, we'll add a segment um, in the start draw, but also in middle draw, it's gonna keep just adding segments along the way. Right. And then at the end, uh, we'll be done. And so there's a whole bunch of things that you can do. You can split lines, you can, uh, do all kinds of things. Um, let's see, a simplify in here. The Jaw Song says, hello, hello again. If I'm not mistaken, uh, you are from Greece, correct? Hello, welcome. So we'll ultimately use simplify at the end to kind of smooth for us, and we can play with the, 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 the tolerance here that we want to actually apply, but that's going to apply the smoothing for us, and it's super simple and really nice to use. All right, um, a bunch of other you know, methods that we're probably not going to use today. But we're going to start with add. So uh, what we need to do in start draw is create a new path. And so let's just see if they have an example for that, right? So var path equals new path. Um, so we'll go ahead and just start with their their boiler code here. Boilerplate code, copy, paste. Okay, I'm glad I got that right. Jaw song is indeed from Greece. Oh, welcome. Um, what well, good evening over there? I think it's I think it's yeah I think it's like 8 p.m. or 9 p.m. over there something like that. All right, so um, we have our new path being instantiated, um, and so uh, we can stroke color is one of the parameters we can add. Our background is black, so let's go ahead and just make this white. Reload, and then we know that we kind of want to keep doing this, right? So, um, but the problem is we can't just say path.stroke color, right? Because path won't be defined when we get to, to middle draw. Um, and so what we want to do is go back to our uh, paper, our, um, our layer. And so I think it's paper, let's see, the easiest way to do this, I think, is to come here to the console, our friendly console. And paper we know is like the global object dot, and then you can kind of look at autofills. I think it's paper.project uh, dot layer. Right, and there's also a shortcut for active layer, um, so I can just choose that because we have a default layer, and dot children, um, which is empty because we don't have any anything in there. Right. But if we just look at active layer, um, you can see oh, there's it's, it's null at the moment. So we gotta we have to add a layer, add something so that it exists, right? So that's what this should do. It's like in Photoshop, clicking add new layer, yeah, and then we can start empty, drawing right? on it. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're going to add, we don't need to have a stroke color. The stroke color is going to be defined um, when we instantiate the path itself. Um, but we want to do, um, so it's paper. What did I say it was? Paper.projects. I'm going to copy paste this. Paper.projects.activeLayer. Uh, this is another handy shortcut. I think it's last. So last child. If we click on that, where did that go? So it's the last item. So basically, it's all these lines are just stored in an array. So you could do, you know, uh, you know, paper dot canvas dot blah 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 dot length right dot children dot length minus one. But they make a nice shortcut for it called last child. So we can just do active layer dot last child, and then uh, to the last child we just want to add a new point, and we can add a point just by passing an object. 
uh, I believe, with x value, which we know is ev.center.x and ev.center.y to pass in the y value. And you want to make it y colon, right? Yes. It might, we might not even need to do this. Um, I'm doing this on the fly here. You might just actually pass the two values. Um, but let's go ahead and see if, if this gets us where we want to go. Oh, ev.center. Yeah, and we'll, we'll skip the end draw for now because it'll just be our kind of cleanup step. So let's see. Bavik Knight says, of course I'm going to stick to the end. I'm pretty much uncomfortable with JS. So this will be a great learning curve for me as Excellent. well. Excellent. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. And then for someone that's the same here, I'd like to enhance my event understanding. OK, I'm going to reload this. I'm going to delete, uh, clear my log here. So no errors. That's a good sign to start. Click and drag. Oh, errors all the way. Last child. Uh, oh, did we, we have to, you said we have to add the layer, right? Did we do that yet? Uh, let's see. I don't think we did. Do we have to add a layer? Or does it? Does it I, so my understanding, I thought, from memory, that it adds it for you when you declare it. Right. Um, but it might not. So let's look at, um, I like to do this, too. So paper. JS add path. Let's just see if they have a, an example for us. Or there's a tutorial working with paths. So you get the anatomy. So you create the path. And this is happening live. So this is uh, their code. So it's Oh, you have to add a new point, it looks like, right? Yes. Instead of just the object? Or can you just I also think, add an I object? I think that you can just add the object. Maybe I think it's both. smart enough. Major uh, Jafat says, does the path default to a line? So the, the path, a path object is a line in Paper.js. It's just like, if we look at the example, right, here's a path item, right, which has all these things. So you can, uh, you know, bend lines, you can adjust these handle in, handle outs, and whatever. We're just simply going to be taking points and making a line by connecting them all. So what we're going to do is just add a bunch of points along the way and, you know, plot a line through them. That's what a path actually is. Um, OK, so you know what? Let's look at a simple example. Um, here's a line. None of their examples are super simple, which yeah, is the That's OK, thing. but we can see how they add it, right? So right. here's the, the actual path with the, the path options. Um, they don't add it anywhere. But you know, I bet you this is one of those things with the, uh, you know, using pure JavaScript versus using their paper script. Yeah. Um, so let's go ahead and using tutorials. Tutorials. And then using JavaScript directly. Yeah, so it looks like it, it looks like it has it. Oh, I do paper.path. Okay. Oh, paper.path. Did I just do dot path? Um, I'm not sure. Oh yeah, you did yeah. do you did do just path, but I'm not sure. Is that a it's uh, new it's new paper.path. That's okay. what I'm missing. Because we're this should fix it. And so that should work. Everybody cross your fingers out there virtually. Here we go. Whew! Look at that. Oh, nice. That's beautiful. So in a very short amount of time, <laughs> if you cut out all the debugging time, we <laughs> suddenly have a drawing app with just kind of the default values except for changing the line color to white. But this is kind of cool, right? Like all of a sudden, super simply, I can draw. So magic, like, I, like this blew my mind because like, you know, when I did this uh, on my own the first time, I was just like, that was super easy, like despite all the, the live debugging. Everybody got to experience the Yeah, the, all right, everybody is cheering us on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all. Uh, DJoker07, hello from the Miami team. Daniel here. So hey, Daniel, hey, thanks for tuning in how you doing, from Daniel? Miami. Good, to, good to see you virtually, Yeah, and if not in person. Probably see you at the fair soon, uh, I imagine. Uh, Asley says, uh, sorry, mistake. George1784, the Bob Ross. Nice, nice. We are, we are doing art. Yeah, I mean, this is art, yeah. yeah. OK, so let's go ahead and just like change our line a little bit. right? So there's a bunch of defaults. Um, let's look at the documentation for path. Um, so if we go to reference, and then there's a path item. I want to just look for like a background, or is it color? Stroke color. So here are the, the stroke styles that we can play with. And you can click on these and see you can make like dashed lines. You can make uh, different things. But I know we want to, the stroke color we'll keep as white for now. Um, and then stroke width, let's go ahead and look at that, right? So um, it's just a number that it gets. So let's go ahead in, in our definition of the path. Let's just thicken the line up a little bit because as you can see, it's super thin. Yeah, it's a bit thin. All right. So um, we say new paper path. Um, and then path that stroke color. So what we could also do is just put an object in here. And we'll go ahead and just move this up into here. So stroke color is white. Um, 
and since it's an object, we don't put a semicolon, we put a comma. And let's put a stroke width equals, give me a number, Colton. Uh, three. Three. Uh, for someone that says, can we animate it too, draw it and make it move? You totally could, right? You can imagine using timeouts and like, uh, you know, setting, uh, you can move things around. So in the final version of draw 50, right, once you draw, you can actually move things around. And so this is uh, using the pan feature. But um, you could imagine like setting a timer on this, like translate from here to here um, over an amount of time, and it would be pretty easy as well. And if you want some really like further reading, um, this, we're doing a very basic tutorial, but you can see, uh, right, super easy in Paper.js to actually animate things. And if you missed it, you can just click on the source up in the top right corner and see all the code that makes this happen. So very easy to, to get started and lots of great examples out there. John Slong says, is there a way to get the video quality to 720p? Uh, we're shooting at 1080. I don't think Twitch, Twitch probably doesn't do live encoding to 720p, right? If, it were, if we're shooting a raster to them in 1080, they probably... I don't believe that they're downscaling, but it's possible. You should be able to get... Because normally, they have, don't they have to encode it on their end to make a 720p stream available? I'm not sure what they do. Some, some places re-encode for you, and some places don't. Okay. Some places just stream what you're streaming. I know a lot of people have been saying that they want a 720p version accessible. It'll be on YouTube, um, so if, uh, if you want to watch it later at 720p, they, it will have a 720p version, but um, I, don't, I, I looked in the UI and I didn't see a 720p option. Um, that was a satisfying end of the day. Gonna watch the rest of the stream on YouTube tomorrow. Good night, says Gulash. Thanks, Gulash. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for sticking till we got some victory. You know. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was that was a very satisfying moment. Okay, so uh, let me reload this page. Uh, invalid shorthand. Oh, this is gonna be a colon. It's like the Lua table syntax. Yeah. There we go. Nice. So there you go, Colton. Nice thick line. That's a nice. And you can line. see if you look here, right? See how this is kind of like a jagged point. Let's go ahead and finish drawing our line and smooth it out at the end because I think uh, that's one of the cool okay. features yeah. that we talked about. So um, let's search for simplify. Is what it's called. It's also smooth. Um, so simplify, you know, fits a sequence of curves. Uh, so it just kind of it really just like simplifies the line. So let's go ahead and just add that. So if we take our shorthand here for getting the last child, right? We're going to do this on end draw, and the reason is, right? We don't want to do this while it's drawing. It'd be kind of funny to watch it like shape yeah, as as yeah, it goes, but it we'll, uh, look a little bit weird. Yeah. So here we go. We get the last layer, right? We so said the last line that we drew is here, and then we can just do simplify, simplify, and then it just takes. I believe it's just a number. So a tolerance. Um, let's see what their example looks like. Example. Path that simplify. I believe you. So you can specify the tolerance, but they don't actually. Yeah, it's, it looks like tolerance. It's a number. Yeah. So uh, default is 2.5. Um, let's go ahead and start with their default, and then we can change it and see what it does. So here we go. Reload. So you can see the kind of jaggies. I'm not going to pick my mouse up, but see this corner right here. Watch this when I let go. Boom! The whole thing kind of shifted a little bit. Um, let's take this to the extreme and just see what happens when we do like a value of let's say 10. Actually, let's even do higher, 20. Go crazy. <laughs> so here comes the line. Let go. Really a lot okay. more smoothing. Yeah, it got, to that, got right? very, very smooth, yeah. So. Um, Bad Ignite. It's auto by default for me because 1080p sticks a lot while live. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't think they do live. I don't think they have a downscaled raster um, live, maybe after the fact for the VOD, but definitely for YouTube. Uh, Nuanda, or As is asking, why not smooth instead of. Um, Oh, let's see. I just don't know what smooth is. Smooth might uh, do what we want, but let's read the documentation. So it smooths the path without changing the amount of segments. So Simplify actually throws segments away. So you can see, if we look at the console here, um, how many segments there are, right? And so just for simplification to get the same line with less data, um, that's what Simplify does. It, simpl it smooths the path and then throws away the points that are needed to recreate it. It fits like a, a Bezier curve right. to it. So. That is why we're using smooth or er, uh, simplify, but you could certainly use smooth as well. Let's see. Let's just actually change it to smooth, and see if it does the same thing. Does I it guess. also take a tolerance parameter? I believe so. Let's see. Oh, it takes options. options. Oh, continuous, asymmetric, catmull, rom, geometric. So yeah. different algorithms for actually computing the smoothness. Yeah. So if you want to really dive into 
how you smooth it. Yeah, there's okay. a lot of there's a lot more complicated stuff for that. It looks right. like. So we'll go back to simplify. <laughs> put that on to the next one. Hassanane eighty seven. Hi there. Thanks for joining us. Major Fat. I just googled and it says you need to be a Twitch partner or get enough number of viewers to get the automatic encoding to different resolutions. Ah, uh, okay. Good to know. Good to know. Um, Twitch partner is a ways away, I think, but it's, that'll be a nice feature to have. First of all, it says, physically, how would you implement this? Or on a smart board or a Promethean? Um, so I can tell you, so if we just go back to the video, let's see, is it my history here? If we go back to the video of uh, David and Sanders, right, so here is David using this to draw, like on a... I don't know if this is, this isn't a smart board, this is just a giant touch screen. And uh, so the reason we're using HammerJS is so that we can use giant, use touch input on a giant screen or on a small screen. If you have like a, a Microsoft Surface tablet or something that has, even an iPad will work as well. I, iOS takes over some of the events that um, you might want. But you can actually pull up CS, draw.cs50.io now and see this on a touch screen. So that would, be, I guess, be the implementation on a touch screen. Um, because Hammer can accept multiple fingers. And if you missed it, if we just go to the final version of draw.cs50, um, I'm going to simulate this just by drawing. But if I use two fingers and I, and I use it, that uh, initiates the erase feature. And then five fingers actually moves it around the screen. So there's a, a few features that we have implemented in the final version. Um, but for now, we're going to keep it simple. But that, so I, I guess the, using the right combination of libraries would be the answer for that. Um, and HammerJS is a great one because you can, with all the different features for it, you can have swipe, you can have pan, you can have, you can even pinch and zoom. I found that to be really finicky um, because it depends on how good your touch hardware is. And the giant Microsoft Surface Hub that is on stage that David is drawing on is actually not that good uh, at the pinch feature. So getting it to scale appropriately was really hard. So, but Pan worked fine. They have their own software, and how did you use this and switch it to the switch to the display method? I'm uh, not entirely sure. So, I guess you'd have to see what API smart boards have. Um, and if they have a JavaScript API, this would be a very easy port. Um, if they have, if you have to build the app in some other language, then it would be a, you know a code port for that. Yeah, you'd have to use whatever library comes with the hardware. Yeah. What we do in CS50 is yeah. So um, what you're seeing is a giant Surface Hub for sunlight. Um, and so basically <laughs> what's happening in reality is that there's a long USB cable that runs from the back of that touchscreen TV to a Microsoft Surface Hub that's in the desk that David is standing at. Um, so you can uh, use that. But if you, if you have any other, if you have a Microsoft Surface or an iPad, you can just go to the website, draw.cs50.io, and, and actually use this yourself. Um, and if smart boards have the ability to go to uh, a website, you could try that. Um, I know on the touchscreens, the Microsoft Surface Hub, they do have a web browser built in, and it does work if you, you know, on, the, on the onboard operating system, you can go to the draw.cs50.io, and it will work as well. Yeah, I'm not super familiar with what smart boards are either. Um, and so also, um, another cool thing, if we look at Hammer, I just want to point this out. Um, they have pointer type available, and you can see here that it, it supports touch, mouse, pen, or connect. Um, and so you can have different actions happen whether you're using your finger or whether you're using an actual stylus, which is kind of cool. And how I did the emoji thing was uh, I, if David was to use the stylus, it would kick off the emojis. Uh, so it's so just cool. kind of like a fun little Easter egg. How does it know that you're using a stylus versus a finger? That's all a hardware thing for you, right? So yeah. it's the nice thing about libraries is like it is abstracted for you. So you just say, is the pointer type touch? Is it mouse? Like you can then use an if condition to kind of choose what you want to happen based That's on That's cool. I didn't realize it, it could actually at the hardware level differentiate. I always figured that the pen did the same thing that triggered a, a touch. Yeah. Thing. So the only thing that bothers me is like I really wanted to be able to flip the pen over and use a race. Uh, and there's no difference. I looked at the event as we've been inspecting in the console. And there's no difference in touch type between the front of the pen with the stylus and the back. It just doesn't That is, that is disappointing, trigger, actually. Because that would be kind of cool. That would be cool. So, uh, for Sunlight says, thank you, Microsoft. Yeah, Microsoft, I, like I have to say, uh, as far as touch hardware goes, like the new Surface Pro, uh, not to advertise for them, but it's, it's a nice piece of hardware. So it was nice to develop on. And, and really, I, I think most of the credit goes to Hammer JS for that, for just being able to be such a great library, so robust for getting so much touch data from any screen. So great. Thanks for Sunlight. Appreciate that. All right, so look at this. We pretty much recreated. Draw 50. Yeah, um, nice. All right, what else should we do? So we've got smoothing going on at the end. Um, 
Should we do a race? Yeah, let's do a race. All right, so um, a race could be very simply, we can copy paste this and paint black would probably be the easiest way. Or maybe we could even uh, pass a color, right? So. Oh yeah, you make um, it more modular that way. Yeah, so color equals, we'll have the default be black or white. So we're gonna pass a second parameter. We only need to pass it to the first one because the rest uh, don't matter. Right. Um, but um, let's see. Should we use a modifier key to do this? Uh, like holding a shift or something for a race? Oh, sure. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that would probably be easier than yeah. double, double click, right? Yeah. Or I guess we could do double click too. Uh, Jasong, when is it your next live tic tac toe? Uh, tomorrow. So at 1 p.m., we'll be doing that. All right, so do they have modifier on here? All right, so it's not actually documented in here, but let me show you a fun little thing. Um, so if we inspect, sorry, I'm jumping around screens a lot here. Let's turn back on our, our console.log um, and just refresh the draw 50 page, not this one, our develop page, and just get an, an event here, right? So if I expand this, there's a ton of information in here, as we know. But there's also the source event, which I believe is the underlying event that's emitted that Hammer.js intercepts. And so you can look at that and see, is the alt key pressed? No. Um, I, don't, I don't claim to know what all these are. You can certainly look them up. But you can see if the control key is pressed. Um, you can see movement. There's so many, so many, how much pressure if you're using a pointer, right? The pointer type is a mouse in this case. Um, Shift key, f shift key as well. yeah. So let's let's use the shift key, right? And okay. so um, you know, let's look at the console. I'm going to go ahead and just clear it. And if I hold in shift and click, let's just look at another event. So if we go down and look at um, source event, and let's look for that shift key again. Shift key is true, right? So nice. clearly, if we are holding the shift key as we do it, let's use that as our erase feature. So we can actually dig into like the low level event itself. Yeah, it's kind of. A fun way around. So um, what we'll do in start here, we'll put uh, if uh, ev dot was a source event. I'm going to make sure I get this right here. Yeah. So event. SRC event. For someone that says, look like I was spamming there. I apologize if you want to write long sentences. No, you're fine. Yeah, yeah. Line. Don't worry about Keep it. Keep it coming. We like the, the interactive. Yeah. The more uh, interaction, the better. Yeah. All right. Source event dot was a shift key. All right, and that's simply so source event shift shift key, and that's simply a boolean, mm -hmm. right? So we can just do that. So we'll do start draw. Uh, we'll pass in ev, and we'll pass in black, right? Because really, what this is is a race. Right. Uh, if the shift key is pressed, and then uh, we'll just say else. Move this line up. Start drawing. Um, we could be explicit and say white here, but we've defined a... Uh, White's a default argument. A default, yep. And then... Um, and the rest of the line doesn't actually do anything for... Um, uh, at the, it smooths at the end, right? And I did find when we made the production version of this, we didn't want smoothing applied for erasing. Um, so... Right, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, so we could do a simple hack in here and just get the stroke color and say if it is the same as the background, or if it is black, right, don't actually smooth, or only smooth, you know, we could use an if condition for that, but we'll leave it as is for the moment. And, and you only have to specify the stroke color for the first segment, yeah, and then every time you add a new one, it just takes whatever the color of the, that first one is. Exactly, path. this new keyword as we, you know, instantiate a new path object from paper, JS, um, you define its values, and you can actually change this later, like if we go into the console, um, this is, I love doing this kind of stuff, so if you just do, uh, Paper dot project dot active layer dot children right you can see that there's two of them, um, and so if you just let's let's look at the first line which I think is this one here on the left, we can actually change these things uh, in here and we'll see it happen. Where is it was a stroke it's color. Stroke color, I believe. So we'll scroll down. It's got a lot of attributes. Yeah, stroke color. Uh, oh wow, it's not as simple as a <laughs> color. Yeah, they've got a lot of you know, saturation, lightness, yeah. hue. So let's just make this 0 
and you can see it changed just by taking half of the red out, it changed this line to be blue. Nice. So it's not as simple as passing a color, I guess. But again, this is the power of the library is they abstract all of the stuff away for us, um, which is pretty awesome. Yeah, that is cool. I actually didn't realize that you could just modify things like that in the in the console. console. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorite parts about JavaScript is like the debugger is just debuilt into your browser. Yeah. I mean, there's actually a debugger too, but um, really handy to just make quick changes or like check to see if a value is what you think it is without having to do like a console.log um, or just print statements. Can we send the background color or change the background color rather than black? Oh, so absolutely. For so it's we're for sunlight. We actually do that in CSS. Um, we say the background color is black, and so we can simply say green, which is going to be really ugly. But there we go. Now the background <laughs> color is green. We're still Man. coloring in white. Yeah, that's, a, that's kind of like a traditional uh, chalkboard, right? Yeah. Um, and we could even, like, if we want to see, there's another, uh, oh boy, do I want to do this? So there's another uh, cool thing in Paper.js. Uh, uh, let's see if we can just search. Let's see, reference. And this is, it's draw, what is it? There's something that is called every frame. On frame. So this is a, a, a view dot on frame function, and what happens is every time, like you know, 60 or 100 times per second or whatever the refresh rate is um, that JavaScript is refreshing uh, the canvas, uh, you can do something every second. So you can see they're just simply rotating the square here, but we could change the color by like one value every frame, and so it would just like be this like oscillation of colors, which would be kind of cool. That is pretty cool. Um, so there's like a super powerful library. Um, um, Bavik Knight, I didn't know that as well. Great way to debug. Yeah, I know, definitely. I don't do a lot of JavaScript development, so it's, I, I'm a little bit out of touch with this world, but it's find it interesting. Yeah. Major thought. I remember doing something like this in my very first programming course years ago in Visual Studio Windows Forms, but I had to make it from scratch. It was ugly. Paper.js for the win. Yeah, I really like Paper.js. Like once you get over the headache of like, if you're not using their paper script and their JavaScript instead, then it's much easier once you're set up. So. Yeah, they've done a really good job of uh, abstracting away the library. Yeah, and enough people use it, and same with Hammer.js, like that's the nice thing about libraries that are very popular. If you Google like Stack Overflow um, or any other the website is going to have great examples and um, you know people who can answer questions. It's not this little tiny library that nobody uses. Um, yeah, so. For Sunlight says, I mean imitating the erase for the uh, background color. Uh, using the uh, using the background color instead of black, like hard yeah, black. Yeah, so uh, let's look at erasing because there's there's two different things we can do. Um, so we're cheating with erase, right? So let's actually label what's going on here so it's clear, right? Um, so color matches background, uh, which is really, or uh, you know, essentially erase. Right, and this is uh, this is draw, right? Um, all right, so now if we want, we're yeah. So we mirror the background color if the background color is black, right? So, so if we keep this as green, green, right? Yeah, it's going to look really funky. Let's do it. Here's draw, and here's a race. Oh, what happened? Oh, I, I think I know what you did. Uh, go back to your. Uh, you haven't replaced that with the variable color. Oh, yep. Okay, great. Thank you, Colton. Mm -hmm. That's why I got my sidekick here. <laughs> okay, so we just, uh, I had hard coded it. I'm unhard coding it. All right, here's the white. And now holding shift, there's the black. So that's a race, essentially. <laughs> that's um, great. It's a little, too, a little small, too. Uh, for sunlight, thank you. Uh, Colton, thank you. It's good to be understood. Yeah, absolutely. Now keep asking questions, everybody. We, it's, this is how we, uh, this is what makes the Twitch show a good time. Yeah, and if there's like, I would say anything not too super complicated that you want us to try to implement, like we could certainly give it a shot. Um, yeah, yeah. Some, some always, that's are, always a dangerous request, right? It is, yeah. OK, um, so let's go ahead and put this back to black. But we, what this does highlight for us is like the problem if we were trying to erase, our eraser is really small. And so we probably want the eraser to be bigger. And so we can just keep adding parameters to our draw if we want. So um, color is white. We can have the. Uh, uh, size. So I guess it's the stroke size. We'll, uh, we might as well match the parameter names. So instead of color, I'm going to actually call this stroke color. And stroke width we'll add as an optional parameter. The default will be, what is our default? You said three, right? Yeah. Very nice. Oh, yeah. So do the fly emoji thing if possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, we could probably, 
Uh, I'm on the wrong account of my account. I was going to say we could pull it up and, and trigger it. Um, oh, yeah. I, we can walk through that in a second. I can show you the code for it. OK, um, so stroke color and stroke width. Now the default is white. Um, the stroke width is three. So if we want the eraser, we probably want um, to have it be like, I don't know, let's say 15 as the, uh, for the eraser. And actually, let's keep this as green, just so we can see what we're doing for a second. So I'm going to reload the page. Here's draw. Here's erase, right? And so that is a much bigger uh, stroke. And this actually highlights, see how this is a square end? Like they even thought through this detail in Paper.js. This is called a, a, a property called end. Let's actually go to uh, the path for a second. Uh, path item maybe. And is it not end cap? Let's see. We're going to find it. Hierarchy. Stroke cap. So this is the uh, shape to be used at the beginning and end. And so you can do round, square, or butt. Um, and the default is butt, which is that square end. And so if we just change that to round, I, th I think it's much prettier. So let's go ahead and go back to our code and just put that in as the default for everything. Um, Stroke, what did I say? Stroke cap. Yeah, yeah. And we'll put round. And now, if I just, just quick to demonstrate that, I'll reload. There's, uh, see how that end is just rounded now instead of the square? I find that much nicer. It's much more natural. So. Yeah, no, as he says, whoa, that's just crazy, the stroke cap. Yeah. So. Dan, how can we add the CSS parameter into the erase function so you don't have to use magic numbers? Uh, the CSS parameter into erase. So I think what you're trying to say is, how do we make it so that you can just erase without having to like tell it what color to erase? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. If, for some lady, if you can elaborate on that question. Yeah, happy to answer it. So well, maybe where we can head next is there's another feature um, for erasing which we can handle, which is called the blend mode. And so basically, in draw.cs50, the real live app, right? If I draw this, and let me just download this for a second. So there's a hidden menu. I can download this drawing I made. Let me open that up. And so you can see that there's no background. It's a transparent background down here. Um, but what happens if I were to erase on here, right? So I just did a big erase. If I was painting black, there would be a black line. Let me hope this isn't broken. Cross my fingers. Right, and see now, it just takes the section out instead of painting black. This is, I actually found this out the hard way when I was first implementing, because my erase was to actually just paint the background color, and that was it. But what we want to do is use this thing called blend mode, and let's pull up the documentation for that. And so blend mode has a bunch of options, um, but it's how it's composited onto the canvas, and we basically want to subtract the uh, top layer from the bot, anything below the top layer, we want to just be invisible. Right. So that when we download the image, um, or if we were to change the background color dynamically, um, you wouldn't have to worry about uh, stroke gate, my color could be parameters, so you can erase any time. So I think, I think I'm answering the question for sunlight. Let me know if I'm not. So basically, um, if we choose, and I forget what blend mode it is, I can look it up by cheating real quick. Also, M. Kloppenberg says, got to go now, watch the rest later on. I've been fiddling around with you guys, but locally here as well, pretty neat stuff. Thanks, Tim and Colton. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it, as always. Uh, let's see, start drawing. Stand by. I recommend alphabetizing your JavaScript functions, too. <laughs> a lot of these things people recommend, and you're like, oh, yeah, I do as why, I say. I wonder why they I do, do it that way. Real Curious Kiwi, which is Brenda from the Facebook group. Hey, guys. Thanks for joining us, Brenda. Appreciate it. It's a shame that we can't get the uh, just the regular Curious Kiwi username. I remember you and I talked about that before. I'm going to cheat. Someone, someone stole level. it from you. Um. So we're using the same library. I can use the same thing. Oh, active yeah, just layer. Dig into the, dig into so the I'm on. This is the. Uh, this is the uh, production version of this app. I'm going to look at the last one and just look at what the blend mode is. So it's called destination out. This is what I was trying to look up. Um, and so let me close our our images that we opened. Uh, 
And so what we can change is the blend mode parameter. Um, So we're getting to the point where we're adding a ton of parameters, and it might make sense to actually break these into separate functions instead of having like defaults for draw and then a secondary like pass a whole bunch of arguments for for erase. But since we've started here, and it wouldn't be all that exciting to watch me refactor the code, we're just going to keep going. So uh, blend mode, uh, the default. What is the default? We got to look that up for a second. It's probably like multiply or normal. Default is normal. Okay. Great. Uh, so the default is normal, and then we'll do, whoops, blend uh, nice. Okay, and really, I, what we should actually do instead of passing like a million parameters is just pass an object. But again, we're not going to bother with that right now. For something that says, can we get it from the event, like the event dot background color? Oh, interesting. So I wouldn't use the event for that, but you can use jQuery for this. Um, and so I believe it's, uh, uh, we're changing the canvas element. So if we do I use a jQuery selector for, uh, what is it called, draw? Yeah. I'm just going to make sure that that is, OK, there it is, right? So if we do draw.css, I think it's simply this, background color. Nice. So there's okay. your RGB value. Um, so you know by putting several different libraries together. Does that answer your question uh, for sunlight? If not, let me know. But it's you know just get the the, the CSS uh, method of jQuery just gives you the the value back. So, so then you have to parse that, turn that into RGB components, and feed that into your erase stroke or whatever. Exactly. If you wanted to just do it that way, if you wanted to just write over it with that color, but we're actually using because then that'll show up in the image that you were printing, like you were saying before. And what we want to do is we want to actually subtract those values from the scene so you get transparency and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, you know you could do that dynamically by getting this parameter and using that instead. Um, yeah. You could, exactly. You could take this the RGB values and pass it as the stroke color. Um, but it's the same issue if you're trying to download the image later um, as an SVG or as uh, a PNG. We downloaded it in PNG in our case. Um, you don't want to have random colors or whatever the background color is painted on, right? You probably want just the lines that you drew to be uh, you know, opaque with the background being transparent. So that's why we implemented it the way that we did. And if somebody were to implement drawing over an image, for example, then a solid color would just, you would very easily see the solid color at that point. It's not, your background doesn't have a consistent color. Yeah. So let me know if uh, that doesn't answer your question for sunlight. And I'm pretty sure that uh, Paper.js can also take RGB values, so there's not even a translation that you have to do. Oh, okay, it's nice. just a certain way to pass the data in by looking at the documentation. So hey, you're welcome. All right. So we got our blend mode. Let's continue down this path here. Um, all right, so the blend mode is if we're erasing destination out. I'm going to cross my fingers that uh, this works now. Brenda says, how did you access the hidden menu on your Draw app? Oh, uh, Brenda, if you go to draw.csc.io, click and swipe up from the bottom center. And it's actually got a black background as well so that you can see it. And it automatically shows and hides. Um, but you can click different colors. You can increase the stroke size. Um, and it stays up as long as you're interacting with it. There's a timeout that if you stop touching it, it'll actually hide. Um, and so you can download your drawing. Um, you know, and this the, is all stuff you've implemented, too. This right? is all stuff that I've implemented. Um, swipe up. It's much easier on a touch screen. You can click on this number to reset. You can um, reload. So if I reload this page, uh, it'll reload the last drawing from uh, local storage. So if you, your, the app crashes on you, the web page crashes, you can get your drawing back, which is also a nice feature. Um, you can erase everything. And draw.cs50.io, the, the base route has no online stuff. Just yeah. Because that way you can just give it to David and Sanders and just be like, draw here, and no one's going to sign in and tinker with it, right? Yeah. And just because we're however many hours later into the stream, if we go to slash Twitch, this is a version that's, uh, hello, this has been <laughs> implemented with. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people have drawn on it. This is awesome. Wow. So uh, you can see that this is implemented with WebSockets. And so if Colton, if you want to pull it up again one more time, um, this is something that I'm still working on. It's an active development in progress. Uh, but it's the same thing. The menu's at the bottom, so you can click and swipe up from the center. And if, uh, if anybody's looking at this now and didn't know earlier the context, this is a publicly available 
uh, page that anybody can draw on right now. Yeah, and I'm going to actually pan this over because pan's implemented in this version. Oh, that's somebody, somebody awesome went really, uh, yeah, that's nice. That's awesome. Patrick, yeah. we got more people drawing Somebody, stuff. Yeah, so people are drawing it out. And I'm, as I move it, it's moving across your screen, too. And then Bavik has the Batman. I think someone drew the, he drew the Batman symbol there. Yeah. That's cool. So it's pretty it's awesome. Oops. CS50 TV, yeah, there we go. So this is a version that we're still uh, very much in development on, but this is like the direction that you can ultimately hit. And uh, I said it before, but this is implemented with WebSockets. So it's all the same kind of functions that we're defining in our development version together, um, but there's WebSockets added, too. So on the same events, I'm transmitting them to everybody else in the room as well. So it's re we're just sending the coordinates, and then your local JavaScript is drawing it on your copy of the canvas. That's so cool. Um, all right, before that gets too dangerous, let's go back here. <laughs> all right, so where were we? Um, let's see. OK, so we we're, were doing our erase. And so uh, basically, we're going to start drawing and pass the destination out parameter to make our eraser transparent. So let's see how this works. Uh, so if I reload and I draw, there's white. And so I, it shouldn't matter whatever color, right? We're passing black as the erase color, but we shouldn't ever see it because as we start drawing, it turns to um, destination out. So that oh, is nice. actually what happens, right? So even though the color being passed, if we actually look at the, uh, the last line on here, um, I'm just going to scroll up and get this. Uh, let's just do last child. And let's look at the stroke color. I bet you it's black, but uh, stroke color. So many, so many different uh, parameters on here. Stroke color. Oh yeah, that's right. Uh, you probably look up components. Hugh, does Hugh do it? Components probably. Uh, where was that? Components. Uh, there, yeah. Yeah, it's RGB. Yeah, so it's RGB. Yeah. All zeros, right? So uh, that's black. Um, white would be. 255, 255, 255. Um, so even though it's black, we're seeing transparent, and that's because of this blend mode. Let's go back and just double check that. Always good to know how things are working. Is been changed to destination out instead of normal, which is what gives us this erase. And if we did the, the trigger download like we do in the final draw 50, we would simply see the white line. We wouldn't see the background, and we wouldn't see any of the black paint from the eraser. Uh, for someone, it's too dangerous for classrooms if the user is anonymous. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, that is the thing, right? Uh, anybody can just log in and draw with us, which is why I've closed that window because um, you <laughs> never know what's going to happen. Thankfully, everybody on stream has been very. Yeah, uh, thank you for being so uh, polite. PG. Yeah. All right. Um, well, we are an hour and fifty minutes in, Colton. I'm not sure if there's anything else you want to implement here. Uh, whatever you have ideas for. Um, if not, I mean, two hours is how long we no we go normally go, but we can go as long as you have uh, Let's stuff see. you want to talk about. Should we make a simple button, a couple buttons that we can use to change the color? and the stroke width, maybe? Yeah, sure, that would be cool. And then we'll call it a day with that. So yeah. let's, let's make a little menu. We won't go through the business of hiding it and whatnot, but let's go ahead and, and add a menu. Oh, Bavik says the emoji thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Bavik, let's see. Let's see if we can get it to work by modifying the JavaScript on the production version. All right, stick with me. I'm not sure if this is going to work. So if we go to draw.cs50.io, I'm going to open. I've also disabled like right click on this, you'll see, because we didn't want the menus to pop up and use your fingers. But if you hit uh, Option Command I, you can bring up your developer tools. Um, and let's see. We want to modify the JavaScript itself. Actually, I know that you can do this, but how do we do it? Uh, this is all the JavaScript that makes the code. Um, so I called it an emoji rain. Your emojis. So I'm looking for that. Uh, emoji. Um, what I'm looking for is that event that uh, triggers it with the pen. Can I search for pen? That's going to come up a million times. No. All right. Stand by, Bavik. We'll get there. I want to. I want to see if we can make this happen. Clear emojis. I'll make this bigger. I 
emoji rain. So this is the function, Bavik. I can at least show you this. Um, increase this, the text size here. So uh, you put in, it takes a number as a parameter for how many emojis you want on screen. Um, so what it does is it creates a new layer called emoji layer. Um, and if it's already been instantiated, it doesn't do it again. Right, so I've got comments here kind of explaining what's going on. Um, so if it's, there are no emojis, it's emoji time, let's go ahead and do it. So the way that we do it is we iterate over um, all of the emojis that are defined up top. Um, and we create a new point text, which is what, uh, you know, we're using path as we do our version of draw 50 here. But the thing called the point text actually creates a, like a character on screen, which, you know, we used emojis. Um, for performance reasons, we use this paper.symbol. So what we're doing is we're converting each of the uh, emojis in the array to a symbol. And what that, it's kind of like a pointer, right? So instead of instantiating, if you have 300 emojis, right, that you, you ask this function for, there's only 30 emojis in the array. So instead of making 300 copies, what you do is the symbol basically acts as like a pointer to right. the copies. So you only instantiate 30 of them, and then it uses the, the references instead. That makes sense. Um, and I found a huge performance difference in doing this as I made this. All right, so then we, uh, you know, push the emojis on to the array. Um, we randomize their position. We um, place them randomly. I'm going to just kind of skip over this code because it, it does get a little bit long. Um, we make sure that the emoji layer is in the back so that whatever we're drawing is still on top. And then we uh, activate the default layer again because, again, I'm using two different layers. For Sunlight says, have a great day, everyone. To regulars, I salute you. Thanks for Sunlight. We salute you as well. Uh, Nuanda says, see you for Sunlight ACDC fan, I suppose. Yeah, it would seem for so. For Sunlight, great to see you. Thanks for the questions. All right. Um, so in uh, hammer.on, yeah, I can't seem to get to where I want to get to here. So we might have to abandon this. Um, let's see if I can just modify it in here. That's hammer. It's in index. Oh, maybe I can't modify it because it's not coming in as a separate JavaScript file. Yeah. Because I want it, this is like how you debug JavaScript in the browser. You can actually set breakpoints and, and get to where you want to be. Right. You would think they would have just made it like a native. Uh, I guess it'd be hard if it's intermingled with your HTML or whatever. Yeah. Oh, man. It's unfortunate because that's the sockets. You think if you clicked here, it would come up or here. Yeah. So, Bavik, I'm sorry. Um, we'll have to get this up and running so that you can test it somehow. We'll put it maybe as an Easter egg in, in the Draw50 uh, live version so that you can click on it. Yeah, that's true. Maybe we can, we can amend the YouTube video with a, yeah. the description link or something. But the, the code is there, and I'm sorry, I can't quickly demonstrate it. Yeah, the code, yeah, the code's on GitHub, so if you did want to take a look at it, definitely, yeah. definitely do. Okay. Bavik says, no problem, thankfully. Thanks for, uh, thanks for sticking with us, Bavik. We appreciate yeah. it. Bavik is a, a regular. I've seen him on I think he's been for a on long every, time. Every yeah. single stream, I think. Maybe he missed one, but I think awesome. he's been on every single one. All right. Um, so we were going to build our menu. So let's go ahead and add. Uh, we'll just add a div for the menu, and then we'll add some buttons to it um, for ease of how it's going to look. I'm just going to pull up some paper here. Um, Okay, we're going to put this right below the canvas, and we're going to have to use some CSS absolute positioning for this so that it, it goes, you know, we'll just put it along the bottom and the center. Okay. But this will just be a div. Um, we'll give it an ID of menu. Um, go ahead and just do this. And then what we'll put into it, um, actually, let's, let's start with the CSS for this, because I find if I do too much and get ahead of myself, it just doesn't work. Um, as you have noticed from the debugging. <laughs> okay, so uh, our menu is going to get its own CSS. And so um, if we look back previously at my cheat CSS sheet here, um, okay, we're going to give it a uh, position absolute. Uh, what am I doing wrong? That should color so right. So position spelled wrong and absolute spelled wrong. Uh, oops, POS. There we go. Nice. There we go. Dan will get there eventually, everybody. Don't <laughs> you worry. Um, we'll give it a width. Uh, let's just say like 50% of the page. It'll be easier. 
Um, just so we can see it, let's go ahead and make the background of this green, and we'll change our actual drawing to black. Um, all right, and then we want to put this into the bottom of the screen. So we're just going to put it zero pixels from the bottom. Um, great, and I think that will make it show up where we want it. Let's see, reload this page. Nope. Uh, I don't think you put it in your um, HTML, right? I think I did. Div ID menu, it's below canvas. Oh, I see. Oh, uh, it doesn't have a height. We've got to give it a height or else it's not going to show up. Um, let's put it uh, 2.5 EM, which is based on text size. There nice. it is. Okay. Okay. Cool. And um, let's center it too. I forget. I think it's text align center. But it might be margins. Yeah, margin auto. Yeah, let's try that. I think text line center affects the things within the div, right? Yeah. Margin left, uh, auto. Margin right, auto. There is shorthand for this, but we're not going to use it. Okay. Nope. Um, let me look at my cheat sheet. Left, zero. Yeah, I'm not super awesome at CSS either, but you could put it all, I think, in a, you could put it in a div. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to debug this together, because this is why I love doing stuff in the browser. Um, so as I mentioned before, you can come over here and affect all the properties, right? So if I uncheck this, like, it changes. Um, we can change the color if we want to. We can make it white. Um, we can make it floral white, which is <laughs> a nice off-white there. Okay, nice. Um, but we're getting away from ourselves, so I'm going to uncheck left. Um, let's do... Uh, Margin left, and let's just see if we can give it like a, a pixel value. Yep, so that'll do it. Um, can we do percent? Fifty percent. So maybe it's twenty-five percent. There we go. Nice. So that'll that'll center that for us. Yeah, since the width is fifty percent, I guess that'll always work, right? Yeah, and uh, you have to remember if I reload this page, these changes don't stick, right? So now we're back to as coded, but we can now just put those same parameters in here. So if we do margin left as twenty-five uh, percent. Reload, bam. So there's, there's our menu kind of stuck to the center for us, and it's nice because it sticks to the bottom of our screen no matter what size it is. Nice. Um, all right, let's add some buttons to our menu. Let's do it. Uh, all right, so what, sh what should we do here, Colton? We could, we could add an eraser if we wanted to. We could yeah. add a, a couple different colors, and we could add a, a plus and minus for increasing or decreasing stroke size. Yeah, we could do all those, yeah. Okay. All right, so let's add, uh, let's do these as what, buttons, buttons, so. So actual HTML buttons. Yeah, because uh, you can change the styling of them just like anything right. else. So the class for this, uh, let's call this menu button. Um, and we'll add, let's see, what should we do first? Do we do colors first? Yeah, we could change the stroke color pretty easily, right? So we yep. could do like three different colors, like white, red, and blue, maybe? Yeah, let's do it. Um, and oh, it's so, very patriotic, too. Yeah, so we're going to give these classes in advance because we know we're going to change CSS for this. But let's call uh, the first one is red. Um, not going to put anything in this for now. I'm just going to leave it blank because um, we're going to make this colorful with CSS. And I'm adding two classes to this by putting a space in between them. Right, right? yeah. Oops, I'm going to actually copy the code. I'm going to copy paste here for red, white, and blue. Red, white, blue. But of course, this doesn't actually do anything. If we look at this page, we can see there are three buttons, but right. they don't do anything yet. We haven't specified the class, uh, yeah. what it means to be that class. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see, did I put a menu button? All right, so we're going to make a class called uh, menu button, uh, which is a dot for class and not uh, pound sign. All right, so now this, uh, whoops, not dot class. <laughs> Menu button. Okay, so what this is going to do is affect anything with the class menu button. Um, and so looking at my cheat sheet, we simply look at a, a height. So height is related to the parent. So the parent being that little menu at the bottom uh, is going to be just be 100%. Width is going to be, uh, I don't know, let's just say like 8% for now. 
because we're gonna, we want to leave room for more buttons. Right. Uh, I think we need a color. Actually, we're well, not going to specify the, color, yeah. right? Because we're going to do that separately. Yeah. Um, let's see if that's enough to get us where we need to go. Right, the size, yeah. And so now I, I did red, white, and blue as classes. So dot red is going to just be background color red, right? And I'm literally going to just, actually, I'll just type it red, white, same thing. Background. They want to give it to you that time. Yeah, not background clip, background color is going to be white and blue. Uh, is blue. Nice. And CSS gives you the lovely ability to use yeah. the keyword representation of the color. Exactly. But you we can could, use we could RGB do RGB or, or hex values even. Uh, reload this, and there we go. Nice. So now the buttons are stretched to the right size. Yeah. Um, I don't like these lines around them, so we can yeah. also take that out using the outline none. And if I want to affect all three of them, right, I can do this in the menu button because I could, you know, do it just for one of the colors, but it right. doesn't make sense. So if we do uh, outline none and reload, oh, fail. Is it border none? Yeah, it is probably border none. I see it there. Well, I yeah, saw it. there it is, border none. And if we're not sure and we're messing around, I, again, I like to do it like this, right? I inspect. I can now uh, use this thing to choose an element. Let's look at the blue. And we can, um, instead of outline none, you said, what do you think, border? Yeah, border, try border none. Uh, just border colon. Yeah. None, right? And perfect, right? The nice. line has now gone away. So if we want to have that stick, we just change it over in our CSS file. Order none, reload the page, and there we go. So now we've got our menu buttons for different colors. So now it's back to the JavaScript side to implement the color change. Let me put that back down. And so that's back in our index.html uh, file. Cool. All right, Bavik likes this. I'm glad, <laughs> Bavik. <laughs> um, OK, so there's our red, white, and blue classes. And so uh, let's do an on, on click. Sure. On, I think it's all lowercase as an event in uh, on the element. Um, so on click, let's call a function called change color, uh, which we haven't defined yet, and let's pass it a value. Let's just give it a color, right? Yeah. So in this case, it'd be red. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna cross my fingers that this actually works. So let me paste this, and this will just be white. Yeah, Bavik says, this is great. We can do CSS there and then change it. Bella Kira says, it's a great debugging tool. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Saves a lot of headaches. Uh, all right, so this does kind of break my syntax highlighting. But uh, no, you want the colon. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Quote. Stop giving me double quotes. <laughs> I don't want them. OK, save. So again, nothing's going to happen. We'll just get an error in the console uh, because there's no change color, function, but, yeah. but it's time to write that function, right? right. And so uh, in the same way that I developed the original draw 50, let's just go ahead and put it at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, change color equals, and we'll just call it color. Um, whoops, doing it the old way again. It's all right, getting, getting it as a habit now, though. Yeah. Um, and so I guess this does break our paradigm of like passing things as parameters, right? Because we can no longer, oh no, we can just call start draw with a color. I'm being dumb. OK, so now we just call start. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. We need to make a separate variable for yeah, this, Yeah, just right? have a variable at the top. Right, so I like to define all the kind of global variables at the top. Um, so let's call this var uh, paint color. And we'll just have the default be white, right? White, yeah. Um, and then stroke, stroke color there, you can make that paint color. Yep. Great. And so we can still override it for the erase feature, which doesn't even matter anymore because we started using that blend mode. Yeah. Um, but hey, we've already written it. We're not going to change it. And then all you do there is just say paint color equals color. Exactly. OK. Right, so very simply, we reload this page. Here's the default. Oh. Blue. oh, what uh, do we do? Change, change color. color is not defined. Uh, Does it have to be? Well, so what scope? Wrong. What scope are we in? So let's see. What, where's this code written? Is it change color. Uh, this is in. Oh, this is in your dot ready function. That's why it needs to be outside of it. Okay, I think. 
Um, is that true? I don't actually think that's true. But it might. maybe we're calling it ahead of where it needs to be. So let me just put it... Maybe. Because like I think right. const has the... Yeah. I think, I think const right. is scope just like let. Yep. All right, so let's put it up there. We'll make our indentation correct just so it's pretty. Reload one more time. Here's our default. All right, I just clicked on white and clicked on red. Ah, it didn't work. Okay. It's, still, it's recognizing that it, it does work. Maybe we take out the debugging messages you have there and then output to the console, like change color to That's X. a good idea. Um, let's put it in. Oh, uh, it's because we're out of scope, right? I, I de declared paint color within the ready function, and I yeah. need to declare it up here yep, yeah. with, uh, with paint color. And the same is actually true. For, these should probably be declared outside of document. Oh, no, actually, because the elements need to exist. So I, I backtrack on that. Yeah. Um, I, I, I like a lot of comments in my code because I forget what I do. So I'm just going to put uh, when document ready. Right, reload, red. Nice, there, we go. there it is. Beautiful. Blue and white. Cool, easy. Yeah. Nope. So. Can we remove const, says Bavik? Um, we can, we but could. it's good practice to, to keep your functions const. Generally, it's the new paradigm. Yeah. It just means that you're not going to change it in yeah. the future. Exactly, well said. Um, all right. Uh, I think, lastly, maybe we'll implement stroke plus and minus to increase or decrease stroke size. Oh, yeah, size. yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. And erase still works, right? No matter what color I'm erasing over, yep. I hold shift and it erases. Beautiful. All right, so let's do... Uh, Everybody's got some support in the chat there. Cool, cool, awesome. Yeah, see, once we get past all the headaches, it gets to be fun, right? This yeah. is a, a fun thing. And I don't know if you're putting these on GitHub. We could commit this code and... and yeah, if you want to make if you make a repo um, and push it, I'll, I'll put the link in the YouTube description. Okay, so you can download this messiness of where we're at. Um, Bavik Knight, uh, I meant that it wasn't changing color. Can we do CSS there and change? Uh, Bavik, I'm sorry. I think I'm reading this thread out of order, so I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I think we solved the problem by by changing the JavaScript. Yeah. Um, all right. So we were going to add two more buttons, right? A plus and a minus? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we'll need some sort of text to tell us, oh, your current stroke order is x. Oh, that's true. And that's where jQuery will help us out a lot. Uh, so let's call this uh, plus minus for a class, right? Because we're going to have some special. I meant the, the const thing when it wasn't changing color. Um, the issue with that was that the const function was being declared inside of the document.onReady function. So it was just a private function. And so our code didn't have access to it outside of that function call. Yeah, basically. Just the wrong scope. Yeah, scoping we, issue. We brought, the, we brought that function out of that function into a more global part of our application so that we could access it through our HTML. Uh, change size. So I'm. So we've written a couple more buttons there yep. that are just changing the size. Those will take, uh, I'm guessing, a um, plus or a, a positive or negative number. Well, I'm thinking then... instead of like clicking and typing in a number, we'll just get whatever the size currently is and increment or decrement. Sure. So we don't need to actually pass any parameters to it. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and make this one. Uh, actually, instead of change size, we probably have to make uh, increase size and decrease size. We could pass like a minus or a plus or, yeah. or a you know, negative value or a positive value, but let's just write two functions for it. So increase size is going to be a plus. Decrease size is going to be a minus. Let's see how this looks. All right, so those look kind of dumb. <laughs> um, but let's go ahead and do a little. Oh, we uh, got we to give them the style, right? Yeah, we let's do a little, little in-browser styling. Um, all right, so uh, we need to change the, the text size. What is it? It's, is it font weight? No, font weight is bold. Let's go ahead and make it font weight bold, though. Font weight bold. There we go. Then I nice and dark. Subtle little. Uh... Yeah, let's do. Uh, let's make the text the same color as the background of the menu. Uh, uh, actually, we're going to. No, let's make it white. Um, that didn't work. So there's some other. Unknown property name, font color, white. No. Is it just color? color? It's just color. Yeah. 
Okay, so now we can't see it, but we need to change the menu. Uh, we can now grab the actual, that's, that's menu button, uh, which means we need to change the background uh, color to, in this case, green, right? So now we can see them again. Uh, let's see if we can uh, put a margin on the bottom, bring those numbers up a little bit. Um, no, maybe 10%, uh, 20%, 25%, 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, 100%, 200%, 300%, 400%, 500%, 600%, 700%, 800%, 900%, 1000%, 1000%, 1000%, 1000%, 1000%,
and I'm just gonna I'm gonna refer to my cheat sheet because I don't claim to know how to do this, but I looked it up, and the internet helped me. Uh, where is it? There it is. Okay, so uh, if we go menu. We're going to take all the buttons on the whole page and then drill down to just the menu button, um, anything that's got the menu button class on it. Um, and in its active state, which means it's pressed, what we're going to do is transform it um, by translating its y value, translate y to px. Just to so this will only it. happen when it's when it's being clicked yeah. down, and it'll go back to the so other. So I'll one. reload and look now. If I click, see how it just oh, it feels I more see. like a click. Yeah. And the colors will do it too. That's cool. Okay. And it's just to kind of give the user some feedback that you're actually hitting it, because I, before I was just watching the console errors pop up, <laughs> and I was like, "Am I clicking it? Is it working?" I'm guessing for right. the proper app, too, we'd want to get rid of that like blue. Yeah, square get rid of the outline. It. Sure, we won't bother. Oh, is that what outline done is? I That's think what so. It is? Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. You want to want to check real quick since we're already here. Why not? Um, Bella Kira says it's nice. The blue. <laughs> the uh, no, the uh, the the deep. Oh I mean, yeah. She's referring to the the depressed state Oops. of the button. Outline none. So yeah. Now if I click, there's no nice. more border. There we go. So, this you is know, we went through all that effort. Let's go ahead and just. Uh, this is a great CSS tutorial for me, and because yeah. I never look at this stuff. I mean CSS. I feel like there are people who are wizards with it, but like for most people, like I think the most helpful thing uh, is to just have this little debugger to, to play with it. And once you get it right, just copy the values over. That's, that's yeah. my MO for doing it. Um, great. Um, all right, let's go back to our code. Make this bigger again. And so I think we were going to add, um, we we're going to add a placeholder for text in between, right? Yeah. So let's just put that in a span. Or actually, for spacing reasons, let's put it in a div. But we'll give it the class of menu button. OK. I don't know if this will break CSS wise. Um, and we'll give this an ID of uh, text size so that we can change it dynamically later with JavaScript, or with uh, jQuery, which okay. is JavaScript. There's our div. And we'll put the placeholder. So um, the default stroke is three, right? So yep. you probably want to just put a three there? Yeah. Oh boy, we broke something, Colton. What happened? Oh, well, divs don't divs normally give you a new line. Oh, they break, right? Yeah. So we could we could fix this, but all right, let's put span. Oh, nice. There's okay. our three. More or less. Our, our minus disappeared though. Oh, yeah. it's because it's slash div. Oh yeah. <laughs> HTML. There we go. It's beautiful. All right, great. And I can still click on my buttons. Uh, now highlight everything. So there's a nice letter three. Um, cool. Letter three, number three. <laughs> Man, it's been a two hours, two hours and twenty minutes, Colton. I'm. Uh, all right. We've good. we've we've come a long way. We have today's stream. This is beautiful. All right. Well, we're almost there. We're almost across the finish line. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Um, all right. So now we need to make a function called increase size and decrease size. So let's go ahead and do that. We want to declare these up here. Um, no arguments to this function. Um, but what we need is a default font size, right? And this one is going to change. Uh, sorry, not font size. What do we call it? Text, uh, what do we want to call this? Font stroke size. size. Oh, yeah. Yeah, stroke size. Yeah, yeah. And the default is three, right? Um, so in this case, right, we just do. What we'll actually do, too, is we'll dynamically set the value here, once we once the document is ready, we'll say, hey, jQuery, go get me the ID of, uh, crap, I forget what it's called. Already text, text size. size. So we called it. Oh, yeah, so it should be font, uh, stroke yeah. size. Stroke size. We didn't use that anywhere else, did we? I don't think so. Great. Only used in two places. Uh, so hey, go get me stroke size. So the is the element with the ID stroke size. Yep, and I believe it's is it inner HTML or just HTML? I it's thought it was. HTML. Uh, yeah, uh, is it that or dot text? But yeah. No, that's only for a text field. I think. We'll see. We'll try this, um, and this is just simply going to be um, stroke size. 
Okay. Right, and we can test this out by sending this to a sentinel value of just negative one, um, and so that should change to a three. If yep, nice. so you can see quickly, it's negative okay. one, right? Yeah. And then it changes when the page is ready. Cool. So I'm going to so put this back to a three. So I won't do the flicker, but right? But now we know that it's dynamically changing, which okay. is great. Um, all right, which is great because that means we're we're getting actually pretty close here. So now if we say uh, stroke. Uh, stroke size. Uh, can, plus you, plus? can you do plus plus in JavaScript? I think you can do plus plus, yeah. All right. And then we can simply do this for. For folks unfamiliar, plus plus means add increment by one. Yeah, take the current value and increment by one. Decrease size. Stroke size minus minus being the inverse of that. Yep. Um, and so the only other thing that we need to do, let's uh, let's actually make a function that updates that value for us, so we know. Uh, what size it is. Uh, every time we hit the button, it increments or decrements the number that's on screen for us. So uh, let's say update stroke size uh, equals uh, arrow function. And so now uh, I can copy paste this code, take that right out of there, and just leave that like that. And uh, at the beginning, we, we can now just execute this function. Nice. Right, so simplifying cleaner, a, little a little bit. Cleaner. And so... Metal Eagle is asking, what IDE are you using right now? Oh, uh, this text editor is simply Sublime Text. I think Sublime Text 3. Um, it is free. Uh, I'm unregistered because I didn't pay for it. Uh, but if you pay for it, it won't bother you with these pop-ups that say, have you registered or would you like to register? And David kindly tossed the link to uh, Sublime Text there in the chat as well. Oh, thank you, David. Um, yeah, it's got some handy things like search and replace, and I believe there's a ton of plugins you can you can plug into it as well. Um, so I just I've used it for a long time. I just really like it. I, you use um, what do you use? I use VS Code nowadays, VS Code. but I, I you used to use Atom, right? Yeah, I used to use Atom, and Sublime Text was the first um, like modern text editor that I used. I think before that I used like Notepad plus plus and a lot of other ones, which are not as fancy or nice looking. Oops, <laughs> I have to do this after we actually change the value. So what I'm doing is in our increase and decrease stroke size, or decrease size, we're just going to uh, update the stroke size once the value has been changed. Right. And so now, I think, Colton, if we cross our fingers, reload the page, here's the default of three. If we hit plus, that changes to a four, five, six, and this should be, oh, it's not going to be thicker because we didn't nope. take any action yeah. yet. Yeah, you haven't right? actually so, uh, updated the uh, yeah. yeah, so let's go ahead and change. That's an easy fix, though. So if we go back to our uh, main drawing function, Right, so we're passing uh, stroke. Oh, it's stroke width. That's the uh, that's the uh, name of it. Not well, size, but you know. Yeah. Well, we can. This uh, we'll we'll demonstrate the find and replace features of uh, <laughs> yeah. Sublime Text. Modern so, modern features such as find and replace. So stroke. Adam size. is slow. VS Code is kind of good, but Vim for the wins is Bavic Knight. Yeah, Adam is a bit slow. VS Code is a bit faster. Um, Vim is going to be faster than both of them, um, you know, given that it is a compiled, you know, the other two are Electron apps. So they're kind of like having uh, web browsers running that do all your uh, code stuff. But yeah, Vim, Vim is cool. David uses Vim. And uh, Jordan Hayashi, who taught the React course, uses Vim as well. I'm not a huge fan, but I tried it. It's, it's, it's a good editor, though. If you're good at it, you can be really fast. And so in Sublime Text here, uh, you can find and replace values. You can uh, say you know, only in selections if I highlight a portion of the screen and say only make the changes in here. It'll only uh, change within whatever you've got selected. And you can also change the whole word, which means that like it wouldn't uh, match on update stroke size because it's not just stroke size on its own. Um, but we have uh, 10 matches here. If I replace all, there we go. So now it's update stroke width. Although we have a problem here because like I was using camel casing right. and I'm not, so I'm just going to leave it as is. But that's how you could use find and replace for it. Andre says Sublime is cool because it's got a really small footprint. Yeah, that's true. It's a C++ text editor versus VS Code and Atom, which are uh, they run on Electron shell, so they're a little bit uh, they could take up more memory, a little bit slower. Real curious, Kiwi. I use Atom, which is brand new. I use Atom, but might try Sublime text to see how it goes. Yeah, definitely try out as many different. Um, programs as you want and you know get a sense of what the landscape looks like. It's always yeah. nice. And just get comfortable with it, get to know its features. Like I know all the shortcuts to jump around and change things in Sublime Text, but I'm sure if I went to any other text editor, I would feel completely lost. Um, all right, so uh, I'm simply going to change the start draw and change the stroke width to, um, uh, what is it, stroke width? Mm -hmm. 
perfect, that is easy. <laughs> and so there is a corner case here I can think of that could be problematic. Like what if I end up, let's actually, let's see it, right? So if I reload, uh, we broke something, Colton. Uh-oh. -uh. Last child of null. So let's go to the top and find the first error. Stroke width is not defined. Oh, because you, uh, stroke, stroke size. Stroke size. Still there. So this is stroke size. Uh, I thought we changed um, everything to be the same word. Right? I undid because of the camel casing. Oh. So okay. if I reload, this should fix it, gotcha. right? There's our, our three. Now if we increase, there's our thicker line, right? So this is nice. But what happens, uh, what size is our eraser by default? We say 20 something? Uh, I think it's 20. Just okay. 20, right? So if we draw with the line size of 37, and then I'm going to hold shift and erase, now our eraser is too small. So right. this is a corner case that we probably want to to fix, right? We always want our eraser to be bigger than our current stroke, yeah. possibly. Um, so uh, for, let's just make a, a var erase size. And let's set it to uh, stroke size times, um, I don't know, four. And so now, although this won't ever get updated, will it? No, you'd have to uh, you'd have to actually uh, trigger the erase size in. Um, you, what you could do is you yeah, could just, just whenever you do an erase, just yep. uh, That's set it. it to stroke size times two, or times whatever. All right. Okay. So yeah. So this is a fifteen. Oh, hard coded. So we need to say stroke size times four. Right. Yeah. So that'll do it for us. So I don't even need. Yeah, need that line. Yeah. Erase size at all. Great. Shorter code. Great. All right. So erase. So now if I change. You know that our array should be at least four times that size. And if we go straight across, you can see how much bigger yeah. it is. So cool. beautiful. Um, I, I think we're pretty close on features here. Yeah, I guess the other uh, thing would be like negative stroke size, but you could just do like an if statement says so if it's. Yeah, I have a base case so that it just yeah. stops if. No smaller than one, possibly. I open Sublime in with five files open as tabs. It's 38 megabytes of RAM, and I don't think I've ever seen VS Code under 300 megabytes. Yeah, no, it's definitely. <laughs> It can, it can use a lot of RAM pretty quickly. Sublime, that's the nice thing about Sublime. Sublime, uh, uh, the, uh, the nice thing about VS Code compared to Sublime is that Sublime is free to try, but it's not free free, um, at least last time I looked at it. Sublime Text. Like it, technically, you need a license for it. Yep. Um, so you can pay for it. But so it's kind of like you get a you trial, and then so you well, can pay for it. Well, it's not a trial. I, I don't pay for it, so it's unregistered. Uh, it just bugs you with a pop-up every now and then. You just have yeah, to say, no, right. thank you. Um, and then, you know, obviously the different text editors are going to have different families of plugins and extensions and things like that. So it's going to be kind of up to whatever you're working on. Um, but yeah, no, all, a lot of text editors are all, they all have pros and cons for sure. In Vim, we can do that all, but just a bit hard learning curve. I lost my VimRC that I customized. Now I'm looking for someone else's VimRC. It's kind of hard to set up. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a, that's a, that's a rough thing. It's, it's a bit more of a, like a down to the metal, not down to the metal per se, but it's a, a more fundamental text editor that does have a much higher startup learning curve. The nice thing about VS Code, though, is you can use it with Vim uh, key bindings. So if you want to use uh, VS Code and all of its plugins and stuff, but also have the feel of Vim, you have that option. And I'm sure there's plugins for like Sublime and Atom that do the same thing. All right, Colton. So I just put that uh, you know base case in, so now we shouldn't be able to go beyond. Oh, nice. Okay. One, right. So that's just our while I'm just size. while I'm talking, just adding features yeah. super fast. Um, All right. Okay. Yeah. No, that's great. We went from you know literally no files uh, to a pretty functional. Um, you know, basic drawing application in just a couple hours. That's pretty. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, especially with all the debugging we did at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, right. That was fun. And we got a nice uh, tutorial on how to use the Chrome Dev Tools, though. Yeah. So it all is all. It wasn't for nothing. It was a good time. Um, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we'll stick around for if anybody has questions for just a couple minutes. We'll we'll hang out. Um, tomorrow we're doing a tutorial uh, or not a tutorial, but I'm going to be doing a, a live from scratch stream on making tic tac toe in Love 2D, so pretty simple game. But if you are uh, completely unfamiliar with game dev, it will be a nice intro, I think. We'll use a lot of the things that we have um, that we have taken a look at before. Uh, David is asking, uh, where can users try it out themselves? We yes. have plugged it a couple times so far, we but we'll do, it, we'll do it one last time. Draw.cs50.io right here will take you to a version. Same, same thing, you swipe up from the bottom, you get the hidden menu, um, but you can draw. And so if there's... Let's prove to David that we have, that we have uh, showed it off in stream. Do you want to pull it up? Uh, 
Sure, we'll cross our fingers yeah, here. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Hopefully nobody's... So if we go to slash Twitch, there we go. So this is what David, everybody has done uh, together. And if you're just joining us on the stream, um, you know, you, we all can draw on this at the same time if you go to draw.cs50.io slash Twitch. People in different languages too. We got a bonjour up in the top. Yeah. Looks I'm like. going to just pan over and see what else we've got going on here. Yeah, we've got a lot of, lot of stuff. Yeah, and someone said lagging. Like it does start to lag, right? Depends on how much RAM you have because um, this is a... You know, a pretty intensive app for drawing. So yeah, so it's great. So it's networked um, right now with uh, you know a couple of caveats. But it, you know, if you just want to use it locally, draw out without a without, without the, any the, slash, slash switch, and then anything. you've got all the stuff without anybody interrupting you. Nice. So, yeah. And it works great. With again, one finger will actually draw. Two fingers will erase. Three fingers is large erase, and then five fingers will pan around. I'm simulating that by holding Shift Command on my Mac to actually move stuff around. Um, but you can do that with five fingers as well. So if you have a touch device, go for it. I might actually use this for like a scratch pad app because I've been lately. I've been like thinking, oh, I could use this yeah. nice scratch pad app to to do some stuff. Well, it's cool because then you can download it just that simply, right? Yeah. There it yeah. is. So there's the drawing we just did. That's pretty cool. Yeah. The uh, the next feature would be like have a notebook, like a like your own like set of pre configured uh, drawings, I guess. It would, it would kind of suck to store all that, I guess, on the server. So it'd be nice if you could do it locally. But local storage is only so big, so it's kind of tough. We'll download our, our shared drawing so we can remember today. That's true. It's oh, a little bit tr yeah, tricky see, to see a lot of it. This is the background yeah. I was talking about. And uh, this is one of the conditions that I'm still working out. But yeah. there we go. we got some memories for today. This is CS50. <laughs> so that's thank amazing. you very much, everybody. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah, Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Um, Bavik says, I'm using IDEs, PyCharm, IntelliJ, and BS Code with them plugin, basically. Yeah, no, it's uh, there's plugins for pretty much anything. Um, Bavic Knight's very good informative stream, especially on the debugging part. <laughs> so it's a good. It's I'm, a glad I'm glad I helped at least one person. Yeah. You know, I'm glad we had some silver linings associated with that. That was uh, that was that was good though. It was useful for me as well because a lot of this is I have to kind of refresh my mind on. Uh, Brenda says thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in, Brenda. For, yeah, thanks, Brenda. For the Brenda. first time, the first time we've seen you on, on in the in the room. Yeah, come join us again. Yeah, definitely. As he says, thanks for downloading. Uh, yeah, we'll keep it forever and ever. Thank you, Dan and Colton, for the stream. It's been fun. Yes, it was. It was a good time. It was. It was I'm glad. Fun. We, I'm glad we took a look at the something a CS50 tool, um, you know, that we sort of built here in house. And thanks to Dan, it's uh, in use every Friday <laughs> in Sanders Theater. In use and in progress. Yes, in uh, const. Yeah, that's a lot of the software, definitely. Cool. All right. Well, um, let's go to the middle screen there, where we have a little bit of a larger view. Uh, yeah, Brenda says no longer a lurker. Uh, yeah, she and I chatted about it the other day. I convinced her to, to pop in. Thank you, Dan Colden and the staff, says Bavik. Our pleasure. Thanks for tuning in. So again, tune in tomorrow at 1 p.m. for a stream on Lua and Love 2D. We'll make tic-tac-toe. So going back from 3D to 2D, we'll, we'll revisit Unity again in the future. Um, and on Friday, if I'm not mistaken, we have a tutorial on how to use Linux commands with Nick Wong, who did oh, a stream good. last week. That's so handy. Yeah. yeah, Linux commands. That one's at 3.30 on Friday. So we'll be able to take a look at what like CD and LS and just using the terminal are all about and some of the uh, internals there. You should do one on regular expressions. I've been asking David to do a regular expression. David, if you're listening, regular expressions, we, they, everybody wants it. It came from, came from Dan, too. <laughs> uh, thanks, Dan and Colton. See you tomorrow, Colton. Hopefully, yeah, Mage, definitely tune in. Same time, see you tomorrow, Friday, Linux stuff. Thanks, Dan Nicole, and says Astley. Yeah. Uh, trying, to get, trying to get a whole bunch of good stuff. So, All right. Thanks, everybody. We're going to end the stream here, but I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Anything uh, you'd like to finish off with? This is CS50. Yeah, this is CS50 on Twitch. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Catch you soon. <laughs>